All right, we are live. Welcome once again to Watchers Talk Live. I am your host, Leonard O'Neill. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good morrow, depending on where in the world you are tuning in. You guys know the spiel, right? How's everybody doing out there in the world today? I'm coming to you live, Orion Rising Live, on uh, Facebook. Let me adjust my camera here a little bit. I realize my camera's sticking up just a little higher than I wanted it to. That's a little bit better. I'd rather cut off my head and show you the beard than cut off my beard and show you my head. All right. So, today we're coming to you live once again. This is uh, going to be a good show. We have uh, uh, Daniel back on here, Daniel of, of Doria, Daniel Dunn. We have him back on here. And I don't know if you guys saw those other shows. We had him on. Uh, it was fabulous. Blew my mind. Blew everybody's mind. Daniel has written a couple of books. You can see them uh, right now on the page. He's written three books. And uh, we're going to talk about those books. And we're going to talk about uh, everything that, that's going on. And uh, we will have a chat. So if you guys want to talk in the chat, um, you can talk in the chat and uh, ask questions. And I'll try to, to field those to Daniel if I can get my uh, computer working here in the chat. Uh, then you guys will be uh, ready to go. So welcome, everybody. And we're going to do some shout-outs. I see Dino from Paranormal End of the Night. Dino's already there. Hey, Dino, how we doing, buddy? He just said hey in the chat over there. So uh, shout-out to him. If you guys don't uh, know who he is, catch his show. Uh, he's got a really good show he does on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, man. There are a couple of good shows that he does. He's got a lot of good stuff, a lot of good people on. Um, he does a lot of stuff like we do with all the paranormal weird stuff. So you guys need to go check him out, right? Uh, as normal, shout-outs to uh, uh, Portal to Ascension. Uh, those guys, uh, I work with those guys, and I, and I help those guys whenever I can, and promote those guys whenever I can. Uh, go to portaltoascension.org, um, and you can see that they're doing a lot of webinars. They're doing a lot of tours around the world. Um, they have some really good uh, speakers that come on and talk about some really, really, really good stuff. Most of the stuff that we talk about uh, on here on Orion Rising. So uh, you should check those guys out. They, they had, they just went on a tour with Michael Tellinger. You guys just missed them. They just finished their tour up uh, about three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, two weeks ago with uh, Michael Tellinger. They toured the whole North American continent um, and uh, talking about uh, Ubuntu Planet. So as, if, speaking of that, UbuntuPlanet.org, go and take a look at what that's about, Michael Tellinger and what that's about. Uh, shout out to him as well. Um, a shout out to uh, Bruce Cunningham. Bruce Cunningham is uh, going to be on the show tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow our time, it'll be Monday his time because he's in the Philippines. We're going to be talking about uh, his magazine and the stuff going on there at Angkor Wat. We're going to be talking about the uh, tours that they're going to be setting up that we're working on uh, that I'm helping him promote for uh, 2018. Uh, so you guys want to take a look at that. Uh, shout out to uh, to Ildi. Ildi is uh, working uh, uh, with uh, Mimo Basha for MimoTours.com. Take a look at that. They have these really, really good tour packages over in Egypt uh, that they're putting together later this year, I believe, and uh, next year. To, it's a 15-day cruise, 14 or 15-day cruise. Uh, you go up and down the Nile. You go back and forth from Luxor to uh, the Giza Plateau. I think they take you down the Nile, and then you fly back up. And you'd have to look at uh, the stuff that's going on. It's just incredibly insane, and it's cheap. It's not that expensive. You should take a look. Also, if you didn't catch the show last night, we had uh, Giorgio Zuclos on here. Take a look at the video that we had uh, going on over there. Uh, you really got to take a look at the video because uh, there is a, a tour that they're putting together for uh, September 3rd through the 10th to uh, to be uh, sailing on this yacht, and there's limited um, seating, or I should say limited uh, uh, tickets, because they're not selling like a 1,000 tickets or 100 tickets or something like that, because they're keeping it small and quaint, and you get this entire yacht uh, to yourselves to do it. It's a, it's a show that uh, heaventoearth.com is putting on. Take a look at that, and the, all the links are on the video uh, that we that we p- released from the show last night, um, because uh, if you go, it's, it's uh, like I said, September 10th through, or 3rd through the 10th, uh, this this uh, year, 2017, and uh, also not very expensive uh, for that tour. And uh, it, you should take a look at the video because you see pictures of the actual yacht you're going to be on and the staterooms and everything that's going on over there. All right, that's I think that's the end of my shout-outs. If I forgot anybody, that's a lot of them, anyways. Right, those are the guys that I'm helping promote for the tours and the things they got going on. So. Today, getting back to our show. Sorry, Daniel. Oh, I should do that at the end of the show so that way you can hang up, right? <laughs> I can just run the spiel off. So uh, we got Daniel back on here, and if you're looking at the uh, screen, you see that uh, his, um, his, uh, uh, his is it rising or raising? I always get those words mixed up. Raising, Eden, probably rising Eden, right? I guess yeah, it's so uh, potatoes or, topo- or potatoes, right? Yeah, raising it is. <laughs> raising, okay. That's just like, you know, I say Orion rising, and that's actually pronounced that way, but people don't know how to say Orion. They look at it, and they, they say that wrong. I don't even know how they say it. If I say it wrong, I'll probably say it wrong forever. 
um, like they say, Orion or something, you know. And so I, I'm like, I don't know where you get that. I don't know. You, Orion. You guys never seen the, the – even there's a picture. So there's a, a, a company in Hollywood that's Orion, and they have the O, and it comes in the – anyway. So you would think that they would understand that. Anyway, but yeah, Orion Rising. Uh, so I give myself a plug there. And uh, for those of you who hate that I plug myself every show, um, change the channel. So <laughs> – you got to plug yourself. Am I right, Daniel? Otherwise, who's going to sell your oh, books? Yeah. Right? Right? That okay. Good it's, it's, the the best truth. Best. it's the best way. I'm the only promoter here. Okay, so um, if you guys haven't seen Daniel before, you've missed out, but it's a good thing that you're tuning in now because you guys have no idea that this guy, how incredible he is, um, his, his knowledge, his wisdom, he has ascended to a place that we can only hope uh, to ascend to. Uh, he's like, uh, he would be like the master sensei uh, compared to most of us uh, because of, of how far he has ascended. And um, uh, we'll get into that. So I'm, I'm already talking too much. So Daniel, say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thank you again. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the slideshow on so you guys can see some of the pictures that Daniel provided for me for you guys to take a look at. Um, I ran that at the very beginning of the show, but I'm, I'm running it again now. So, um, Daniel, just in case people don't know who you are and they did not know who you were and they missed all the first show that you were on, and I think we had you on. Do you have you on twice or do you still have you on once? I might have had you on. Yeah, it's, well, it's just one. It's, it's just supposed to be twice, you know, to me twice and I had to reschedule. Is that what it was? <laughs> Right, right, yeah. right. Apologize for that. So at least I got you back on now. So yeah, tell everybody who you are and what you're about. Uh, that way they know and it, it, where we can get your books. If you have a website, where that is, give them all that information and background information on you. Okay. Well, uh, I'm Daniel Dunn, aka Daniel of Doria, on YouTube, and uh, you know I've been I made about ten thousand videos since about 2008, and they cover just about every single subject that um, you know. You know, you could ever need really, and then um, I basically have the most uh, suppressed channel on YouTube as well. You know, in the human world, you know, it's so, uh, no joke I either. Was, I know it's no joke. What I decided to do was instead of um, fighting an uphill battle all this time, I decided to write all of my knowledge and wisdom into some books, you know, to add some permanence to them so they, you know, last within the world. So I've created a whole um, book trilogy, you know. And, uh, you know, I've just recently released the uh, the very last one of the trilogy um, a few weeks ago, you know, on Amazon. And all of the books are available on Amazon. Uh, and the first one is Raising Eden, Wisdom of the Eternal. And that came out in November at the end of last year. And then uh, the next one came out only in, um, like, you know, April um, 2017, just gone. And then the latest one, uh, Raising Eden, Wisdom of the uh, Ascendant, which is uh, volume three, that's just only recently come out. But uh, like I said, all my books are available on Amazon, and uh, they took a decade uh, to create them all and put together and piece together from all of my YouTube work, all of the, um, you know, because I, I develop a relationship with my higher self every day, so I've received a lot of new wisdom over the last few months and uh, the last year and stuff. I've also, you know, completely brought everything up to date till, you know, to, you know, to about two weeks ago, really, and uh, I put all of that in there as well. And it's basically just uh, a whole decade of uh, my heart and my soul, and uh, all of the highest wisdom that I have poured into these three books that you know took like ten years to make, and uh, they're all available on Amazon in paperback. You know, so you know that about sums it up really. But as to where I go from here. It's all about, obviously, uh, now these foundational pillars are in place, it's about creating uh, very powerful spiritual communities the entire world over. That's where the work's going to go. But at the moment, it's just, uh, you know, promoting these books and making people aware that there is actually these uh, books out there in this trilogy, you know. So, right. And yeah. now, now tell us about, uh, about the books. Let's so start with the first book. Tell us about how what that book's about, and and then and then run through the other books, and then I'll start asking you some questions uh, about stuff. But let's start with book one. What is book one about, and what inspired you to write that? Well, uh, I mean, the whole uh, Raising Eden trilogy uh, actually uh, came from a, a vision I had uh, more than a decade ago, and it was just one vision. But it was like I completely knew what it meant. You know, it it was um, a vision of like two different uh, timelines, you know, timelines of the earth. One was a timeline in which the human race was, um, you know, completely, 
um, you know, enslaved and, you know, connected to a hive computer AI system and stuff, and it had been compute, uh, completely, um, you know, ravaged and completely pent of all its resources, you know, it completely conquered, you know, as you could say, and then it was like um, the race was divided into, you know, like a subspecies as well, of because, uh, and like most of the human race was annihilated and taken out you know, because they only wanted a small number so they could control them uh, properly. Like today, they can't, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the evil darkness and the predator consciousness, you know, from the great abyss, as I call it, you know, which is the uh, the best, most accurate term, I think, you know, to describe this uh, consciousness, because it's like a predatory consciousness that infiltrates creation and infiltrates um, beings themselves within the creation and takes over, you know, and influences them, you know, and influences um, them from the level and dimension of mind itself, you know, which means that they have total control of you, you, you know, your mental environment where you actually have thoughts, you know, so in order to defeat that kind of... Um, you know, enslavement, you've got to really connect with um, yourself and be operating from a higher level, which is, you know, obviously your heart beyond the, you know, the surface, shallow, human mind and stuff, into your what you are, right. you know. <clears throat> and so uh, the second vision was um, because I, um, you know, it, it, in order for something to exist, you know, this comes from my third book, in order for something to exist, it's got to be, um, you know, aware of its own existence, it's got to be open to the possibility of itself, you know, existing, and so um, what I did was, I uh, created like a vision, you know, throughout the Raising Eden trilogy, <clears throat> that, um, you know, that, that's one of the reasons for the, um, you know, the pictures of the, the futuristic stuff and stuff, is because I'm creating a vision right now, towards a timeline that I'd like humanity to um, create and head towards, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, you've got to create the vision for people to go that way. It's the same with today with many movies and stuff and, um, you know, the way the elite are working on the consciousness of the, uh, you know, of the human population today, you know, the native population on this world, right. is that um, they're trying to steer the, um, you know, their creational power because everyone's a you know a creator everyone has infinite potential and what the elites are trying to do is they're trying to steer people in the way that they want them so i'm kind of countering that and providing people with a vision that you know there is a better way to do stuff you know there is something you know look at this way look you know look at this and you know you can do it this way and uh, you could do this and it will turn out you know like this you know but that's down to the person but you know, the ultimate uh, most important thing is, you know, in all of this that's going on is, you know, how present are you to yourself? You know, that's the, uh, the most important thing, you know, because, you know, concentration of energy within a being is power. You know, that's how the power translates. The more concentrated a being, the more influence that they're going to have within not only, um, you know, the world itself and the universe, but also within um, all of the subdomains of, like, the mental environment and stuff as well, and the emotional planes and stuff, and uh, the causal planes. But, you know, ultimately, that's the thing. So, you know, the, uh, the first book is basically, it covers absolutely everything because it has to create the context of everything you know, so that people can look into it further and stuff, you know, so it covers everything from UFOs to, um, you know, being able to uh, locate them within the world, you know, and also it goes into Atlantis and the ancients, but the uh, the primary focus, though, it's, is always on, um, you know, self-empowerment, you know, that's the ultimate thing, you know, and uh, that's the same within all of the books as well, it's, um, you know, the focus is always on self-empowerment, which is actually the purpose of why I created the YouTube channel in the first place and all of the other channels I do, you know. It's that uh, I wanted to uh, create something where I gave the best of myself to, you know, the world as a gift, you know, that they can use for themselves as well. And that's, uh, it's practical, direct knowledge, basically, and wisdom that people can apply right now, you know, this second, you know, onwards, you know, and that will make them more powerful, stronger and certain within themselves you know, and uh, so the second book, you know, it, it kind of um, spirals outwards and goes into more detail and covers all of the subjects again, but in greater detail, but, you know, the, the uh, you know, the focus again is on self-empowerment, and then the third book, just, uh, it's like a, like a spiral that fractally 
goes outwards and it's ever expanding, ever adding new subjects and stuff into it. But ultimately, it's um, you know it just expands everything that was said in the second one and the first one, but just in greater detail, you know. So yeah, that's right. about it. That's about it. Sums it up. Well, see, yeah, and, and that's that's good because people need to they, they really need to understand that um, the way the way that the universe works and the way that we need to work and the things that we need to do uh, in this in the, to, for ourselves to make it. I mean, look at like like you just said, uh, Daniel just said, where the these uh, the power elite is trying to take us down one road, and they want it. They want it. Well, you've heard us talk about this many times. Uh, uh, with all these different conspiracy uh, uh, guys that I've had on here, with the different psychics that I've had on here, and and then you know uh, me talking about the the global banking corruption and all, these guys that are in charge of the of the planet think they're in charge of the planet. This world mafia, this this behind the scenes group of rich fat cats that are different families across the world who believe that they own this planet and that we're just their cattle. They, they they believe that. And so everything that you see, you guys may not know this, but everything that you see on your television, your magazines, your radio, your movies that are made all across the world that we all watch is tailoring you to set your ideology to a certain uh, to a certain ideology that they want you to stay within, which is exactly where uh, America is now. And I'm sure England is in the same position that we're in, where everything is, nothing has changed. We've gotten technology to toys to play with. We have video games. We have cell phones, smartphones. We have now computers that we can play with, but nothing else has changed since 1955. The combustion engine is still the exact same. The only difference is now we have a computer running it, but it's still the same engine. All the parts inside there, if you open up a Ford right now and you look at their, uh, the Ford uh, um, uh, power steering pump, the power steering pump looks like a tin can. Looks like the original tin can they made the power steering pump out of back in the in the early 18 or 1900s. So it hasn't changed much. The Ford, anybody who's ever driven a Ford knows that when you get to the end of a Ford, it goes, and then when it starts to uh, not have enough fluid in it, and you're turning the wheel, it starts telling you, starts squealing, right? Now, nothing's changed. Everyone knows their whole life that a Ford does that. So that's how you gauge when you need power steering fluid. When the, when the Ford starts to whine at you, you go, oh, need power steering fluid. Your grandfather taught you that. Nothing has changed. They don't want it to change. They want the status quo the way it is. And Daniel is one of these people, like we had Heather on here the other day, the same thing, forward thinking. We're going to have Travis uh, Smith back on here again, and he's just a guy who looked around, and he's also wise enough to see this. And he, another person is forward thinking. And those of you who watched, uh, uh, and I keep going back to uh, Stephen Greer, Stephen Greer is telling you the same things that Daniel's telling us right now. And Stephen Greer has been vetted in and talking to aliens, and, and, and you guys don't get it. Most of these guys... Uh, you know, the alien guys, all they want to do, if, if we don't start the show and go, aliens, 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 they go, oh, I don't want to watch this show. I don't know what it's about. And then they try to run away from the show. Later, someone tells them, wait a minute, this has to do with all of that. It's all encompassed. We, as a, as a race of people, if we want to be free and we want to be uh, find ourselves in the universe and, and, and be a positive utopia, we need to break away from where they're trying to keep us as barbarians. We're, we have to break away from that. We need to we need to ascend to our own higher selves so that we can. There, there's two there's two roads. Daniel uh, touched on this uh, slightly. There's two roads of thinking of where we're going to go, and Daniel saw that. There's two roads of thinking of where we're going to go, and I've known this. I just talked about this the other day. I've known this since I was in my 20s. It was being taught even back then. There's people who believe in doom and gloom and that the world's going to come to an end, and then there's people who don't. Now, it's even written in the, in the Christian Bible where you're going to have the rapture and there's going to be people left behind. So, so that's bizarre, right? So what if that really is going to happen? What if there is going to be a split where those people who ascend are going to move on to the utopia that we're building, and those people who don't believe in it are going to be the left behind, and they're going to be stuck in that reality where the world is being run by this uh, behind-the-scenes world mafia, and you're going to be a slave until they kill you, and then you may make your way back to us. What if that's true? Now, I don't believe that's true because I'll tell you why. Because I believe Daniel, and I believe myself, and I believe people like me, and we're not going to let that happen. So those of you who are not caught up, you're going to have to catch up because we're going to make you do it. Because we are going to not allow them to keep us where they are, and they can't do anything about it. They can kill us. We'll just recycle and come back. That's what pisses them off. 
If they killed Daniel today and they killed me today, I'd be born tomorrow or the next day. Actually, no, I was told that you, that you take off uh, some time before you come back. But we would be come back and someone just like me would come back. And it's still going to happen. They're just trying to hold on to it as long as they can by trying to bump people off or doing like they do to Daniel where they have delete his uh, stuff. And, I, and it's true. He said that at the beginning, if you missed that. He's the most deleted uh, and abused person on YouTube because uh, people hate on him, hate on him, hate on him because they're trying to keep him down because what he's doing is what everybody needs to know. And so because of that, they're going after him. Am I, am I right? They've been doing that to you for years, right, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, death threats, uh, you know, commonplace, you know, towards me and stuff, you know, all of the time and stuff. But, you know, I just wanted to say as well, you know, uh, you know, uh, mankind, you know, are going to continue to become weakened and diseased and disempowered. And the species is going to perish, you know, if it continues to walk in the shadow of its own enlightenment. Right. You know, the tide are turning against us, you know. So who will you turn to for your strength, power and stability? And, you know, I always say the singular truth within, you know, the part of you, basically, that never left God. You know, and uh, I also, right. you know, there's something I say all of the time, which is, you know, you've got to transcend by fear, you know, transcend by shadow and imbue and ascend with by love. And the other thing that people need to know is, as long as the money that uh, everybody's using is allowed to be printed out of thin air, yeah. and people are apathetic, you know, people are ap apathetic to the truth, yep. you know, the living singular truth within themselves as well, right. that few evil men and beings have full control over your life, your children, and your future. You know, and he's absolutely right, and I don't know if you guys know, I'm going to plug myself again, and Daniel probably did that on purpose. I wrote a book about that, and it's called How to Get Out of Debt surviving in the 21st century and it tells you and explains in there how money is made out of thin air money if you don't know how the u.s dollar is made how the english pound is made how the french mark is made these are all made out of thin air there they have they have a banking system we have the we have what we call the fed and over in the uk and the, and the and i give the english uh so much credit for for and i hope you guys stay out of the the european union and stay on your own monetary system I, I really do because that was ruining you. It was ruining your economy, ruining your people. Um, the Irish almost uh, opted out and wish they did. The Greeks almost opted out, and I'm sure they wish they did. Um, I'm glad you guys voted yourselves out of that and stay out of that. So don't, don't join any union. Keep your United Kingdom uh, and, yeah. and do that. You know what I mean? Fight. Keep away from those people. There's well, a banking system out there that's ruining us, guys, and they're just they just decide our government just decides they want a hundred million dollars for or something, and they go to the Fed and say we want a hundred million dollars. We voted on it. The Fed writes a check and, and takes that and gives it to the U.S. Treasury, and there is no money in that bank account. And the U.S. Treasury prints a hundred million dollars and puts it into circulation and, and gives it to the bank, and they sell bonds on it, and then you then you and I in America owe money. We owe that $100 million back because they borrowed it basically from us and printed it out of thin air. So you and I have to pay for it through taxes. That happens all over the world with the different banking commissions that are in the different country, countries. The UK has their own. The, the, the uh, uh, European Union has theirs, which is even worse than the Fed over here. Uh, anyway, so go ahead, Daniel. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, what well, made me laugh about the Brexit and everything, and I found out some uh, you know revelations about the Brexit and uh, Trump and it's right. all uh, interlinked into each other. And uh, I oh, actually I found, it. I actually did some deep, deep research, you know, right. as much as anybody could do, like journalistic, uh, you know, kind of detective work. And I found out that a lot of the uh, companies that actually uh, swung and influenced people using the tools that is Facebook and Google. Um, what, what you know, the reason for the power uh, swing within the world at the moment is because, um, you know, uh, not only did Trump friends Trump and Russian billionaires get together, but they actually took the uh, they actually took psychological warfare out of you know from the industrial military complex from the realms of war and actually did it on the civilian population itself. And uh, Trump and Brexit are you know completely linked in with one another. Mm -hmm. And uh, I track loads of um, computer companies actually back to Canada who actually helped using Facebook and Google itself, you know, which in on it as well, right. to actually swing the vote to actually get Trump uh, as the president of the United States. And uh, Google, of course, they deleted the entire history of all of their, you know, all of this going on because they can. Because they can, right? Well, so, well, so, see, now, that would suggest, it. like, everything that's going on in the news right now would be a red herring. 
And for those people who don't know what that means because you're too young to know what a red herring means, that means that, that that's the sleight of hand. They're telling you, look over here. The Democrats are saying he worked with the Russians to askew the, the a vote, and, he's, and they're letting that play out. Yeah, look over here. It was the Russians. Yeah, yeah. And, and now there's this big committee. It had nothing to do with it. But the truth is he didn't work with the Russians. <laughs> right? The truth is he worked with everybody else. And so they're letting that play out on the news so that you're so obsessed with trying to find that Trump had something to do with Putin and that the two of them had all this to do, and it was really Google and Facebook and Trump and and uh, what was the name that you who were the the people that you used what was their name? Uh, yeah, it was just uh, some computer companies in uh, okay. Canada. Right. And they See, Look, just it, there you the, go. The history, you know, that basically Google, uh, if they do anything that's against uh, like companies, and you know they're actually in the news at the moment about um, you know even uh, other companies like Calcu, I think it is, it's called Calcu or something, but they uh, they were making traffic uh, less for them. And more for Google, if you know what I mean. Like putting all their stuff to the top and putting all Calcus and all the competition to the bottom because they don't like competition, basically. But when it comes to uh, the Brexit and the Trump thing, it's all linked. It's one big machine that's working together. You know, the whole Brexit and Trump thing. You know, it's not separate. It's a unified entity. And uh, you know, like I says, the power of uh, Google and Facebook. You know, has been used you know, to influence uh, the masses because they're using now psychological warfare. They took it out of the realm of military application and they're actually using it on the civilian population now, you know, on a world uh, scale. And that's how the balance got tipped, you know, how it is at the moment because, you know, they're using all this on the civilian population. I was going to say as well, you know, you know, with the, uh, the Chateau, which is, uh, you know, my term for the greys and, uh, you know, some of that predator consciousness that's on the world and stuff. Right. And that is controlling the world, you know. Humanity is always on the precipice of total disaster. Right. And even the extinction of itself, you know. So a person's got to be as self-sufficient as possible to ensure the greater chance of survival and stuff. Because, you know, the Shetu and the Allies, you know, they have full control of the world economy. They, have, they can collapse at any day they do so choose. You know, and that's too much power over others for any group of beings to have. You know, Absolutely. that's total power over yeah. beings like this. You know, it's called slavery. So basically, don't allow this insanity to continue. Right, you know? I agree with that 100. percent And you guys should be prepared just in case something like that happens. And you know, again, there's a book that I wrote. Right, um, take a look at my book. It'll teach you if you don't know how to do it, and take care of yourself, and get prepared just in case something happens. And not only if the if the government decides to go crazy and lock lock everything down, but but it just just in and of itself, if you live anywhere in the world, there are natural disasters that happen in your area, and you should be prepared for that, just in case something happens. So you're not without food. The the average American, I don't know how it is in in the UK, but the average American only has about three or four days of food in their stores in their in their uh, house that they keep they don't keep much more than that unless they've just gone to the to the to the show and or to the store uh, to the market and picked up a bunch of food and put it in their freezer uh, otherwise um, they, they average about four or five days worth of food and they have even less in water uh, you know right now truthfully I don't have much water stores I have I have about a gallon of water and I you know I know I need to fix that but that you know that's you you, you have you need to have like the average person goes through a liter of water a day you have to have and that's that includes like washing yourself and drinking not just drinking depending on where you are hotter zones you need to drink about a liter of water a day because you're gonna sweat it out colder zones you don't need to drink as much but you but you also need to have water to cook with you need to have water to clean your clothes with you need to have water to wash your dishes with so about a liter per person per day and and if you're in America you can just round it up to a gallon it's you know it's only a little bit different from a liter if you're in America you can use a gallon because that's what they use here but everywhere else on the planet a liter a day and that's what you need to do. You need to plan for that and have some stuff stored uh, and just in case. And then the most important thing, even if you don't believe in any of that, the most important thing is, is that you need, to, you need to look into yourself and you need to actually change and, and change yourself spiritually. You need to get away from, you don't, I don't care if you believe in any gods. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care about that. I don't care any of that. I don't care what God you believe in because none of that's important. It's not that important. I mean, it is, but it's not. And you'll find that out because I tell, I tell those people, Daniel, that they don't believe in that, that it's not important because it's not. The message is more important. You and I know where they'll get once they start on the path. So they'll, they'll, they'll get to a point where, where what I'm saying to you, people who might say, wait, no, that is important. That's because you're ready for that. Those people who aren't, 
it's not that important. It's the message. What you need to do is you need to enhance yourself. You need to better yourself because, like Daniel said, we're getting sicker and sicker and sicker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So we need to get bigger. We need to get stronger. And how do we do that? We have to center ourselves and focus and eat healthy. We have to we have to ground ourselves to this planet instead of instead of uh, not being in touch with the Earth itself or the or the universe. We have to acknowledge that it's there and feel it. Am I wrong in that, Daniel? No, that's absolutely right. You know, you've got to uh, basically. All the parts of yourself that you've never given thought to, you know, give some thought to and give some time to because ultimately it comes down to um, self-love first, you know, and, and I, I, you know, in the spiritual movement, you know, a lot of people think that love is all wishy-washy and fluffy and stuff, but ultimately it's not, you know, ultimately right. it's the most powerful force within existence itself and uh, life can only exist because of love, you know, the creator itself you know, fractured itself into all of the varying parts that we can perceive now, you know, not, you know, not only the creation itself, but all of the beings within the creation itself, and, uh, you know, everything at the highest level is just one unit of energy, and, uh, you know, on our level, obviously, you know, we see an entire world, and we see uh, planets and stars, and we see, you know, individual beings and stuff, but that ultimately is just uh, an illusion, because the only thing that's separating all of that energy you know, and allowing it to be able to express itself is the magnetic field, and the magnetic field is what cordons off the energy and allows it to exist, you know, within form and time itself. And, you know, as soon as you have a magnetic field, you birth time, because time is like a glue that slows down the manifestations and projections of energy, so beingness and, um, you know, form can actually exist itself and stuff. But, you know, like you were saying earlier, though, about these, um, you know, darker forces, you know, rather than, you know, hijacking reality, you know, and using their own energy to do so, you know, the Shetu and, you know, the self-proclaimed elites, they try to foment an atmosphere of vulnerability so people hijack their own reality and gift it to the slave masters willingly, you know, that's one of the things they do. And, uh, you know, the, you know, God, basically the master creator, you know, anything's possible for God. You know, it's a pure, selfless, benevolent love, and it has infinite power to be able to create anything. And these beings themselves, you know, these fallen angels, you know, they, uh, a long time ago, they got very angered by this, and, you know, jealous of God the Creator and the fallen angels, you know, because of wanting more power themselves and wanting, right. you know, more. They wanted the, the, the powers of the Most High, but when this didn't work out the way they wanted, you know, like children, they decided to rebel against it. And now, you know, they use humanity and countless races within the, the multiverse to mock God by getting them to war on one another, you know, as much as possible. And they spend the time just infiltrating and corrupting, you know, not only the creation as much as possible, but all of the beings within the creation itself, you know, because... You know, God basically gave free will to all beings, the Shetu, the fallen angelics, the allies, you know, including the self-proclaimed elite, you know, humans of this world and stuff, and all decided to be, you know, masters of evil, because this was the only space within creation itself that they felt they could occupy and they could rule, you know, because they knew that, you know, nobody, could, you know, possessed the power of God the Creator, and they can't create or replicate it in any way near what uh, God can do, basically, so... The beings not only imitate or make inferior copies of themselves, you know, mastery of God, but they also, you know, they're just basically a shallow, pale reflection in comparison, you know, to that. So, yeah, I just wanted to say some of that. <laughs> right, no, I, I agree 100%. And, and <clears throat> Josie in the chat brought up a, a very good point for, for those of you guys, in case you're not looking at the chat. She said it's always useful, very useful, to learn about indigenous plants because there's so many. And, you know, that, that brings up a good point because uh, I had, I'm had i back in California now, but I had moved to Arizona and I lived there for four and a half years in Arizona. And my buddy that was living out here in California said, wow, man, you better figure out what you're going to do because if the world goes crazy, you're in the middle of a desert and you're going you're gonna to starve to death. And I, you know, I'm over here in the city where, you know, we have squirrels and all this and all, we'll be all I'll be fine. I'm worried about you. So I was like, yeah, man, maybe he's right, so I better look this up. So I, I looked up the indigenous uh, plants and realized that, that um, I have a virtual salad uh, in that desert that uh, have far more uh, edibles in that desert than you have in the modern city by by thousands because in the modern city they knock everything down they plant what's pretty and most of the time what's pretty is poisonous to us so we can't consume it 
So most of the stuff that you have, I don't know how it is in, in England uh, or over in the U.K., but here in America, that's what they do. They knock down everything when they build a housing track completely to nothing, and then they plant trees and plants that are pretty. Well, most of those are poisonous, so we can't eat them. So over in the desert, it's natural things that have evolved that we, because we, yeah, over time, we pull out and kill most of the plants that are poisonous to us, except for the pretty ones, and the rest of them we can eat. So I found out that the desert, uh, you could walk out, I could go less than a mile from my house and, and get asparagus, per, pull it right out of the ground, and different grasses that you can eat and, and plants that you can eat. And I was like, I, I said to him back, I added it into my books. So if you guys ever read my book, you'll see that I, I tell you some of the stuff that I had in Arizona. You just have to look around and, and find out what you have. In the modern city, I'm, I'm over by Sacramento, California, which is the capital of California, and it's, it's wall-to-wall city. Um, the only way I would be able to find something to eat is uh, find a, a rural area where people planted stuff in their backyard where there's oranges and apples and things like that. So it's important to, to learn what's in your area is what I'm bringing up because Josie had that point. It was a great point. Um, study them. Find out what's, what, what's going on and what's available. What, I'm reading now again what she wrote. <laughs> study them. Uh, it's insane what is available even in, in – uh, in our flower beds, she said. So, yeah, and that's the other thing, too. You can, you can plant stuff if you have a yard, if you have a garden. Uh, the people in the rest of the world call it a garden. We call it a, a backyard. If you have a garden, plant. If you have a backyard, plant. You can plant foods that, that, that you can grow, uh, you know, and protect it from the elements and from the other animals that will cut down the amount of money you have to pay to go to the grocery to, to get uh, stuff to eat, you know. That's just the stuff for survival. But the, the important thing is the, uh, what Daniel's trying to say is that, and um, learn, learn who you are. Learn to love who you are. Because those of you who want to communicate with aliens that are out there and you want disclosure for, for these aliens that are out there, you're not going to get it from the government. Daniel just told you that. You're not going to get it from them. They don't want you to know about it. They're trying to hide it from you. You're not going to get disclosure. You're never going to force the, the government, the American government, just they're in denial. All other governments have come out and said there are aliens, they're real. The American government is, is refusing to come out and say that because of how embedded they are with these aliens. It's the only way you're going to get that to happen. And Dr. Stephen Greer tell you this. Uh, Daniel's telling you this. I've been telling you this. Heather uh, the psychic's telling you this. The other psychics we've had on are all telling you this. The conspiracy guys that we've had on uh, are all telling you this. So you got to understand, you guys are never going to force the federal government until we put it in their face. So the only way you're going to get disclosure is you me and everyone else we are going to be the disclosure guys like daniel guys like me we're going to work together and we're going to ascend to a point stephen greer dr stephen greer watch the videos i posted he has done that he is through meditation gotten himself to a point where he is vibrating at a certain uh, vibration level and that he is in love with himself he loves himself and he loves the universe and his intentions are true and he through telepathy because of his meditation, is able to communicate with aliens and call them down and they land. And he says, hi, how you doing? And talks to them. You want disclosure? You can do it yourself. You can learn and then meditate, just like Daniel said, and get spiritually to a place where they'll come and talk to you. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm sure Daniel's going to do it. And at some point, we're going to be able to do that. So you guys need to do it as well. Am I wrong, Daniel? Is, am I right in that? Well, uh, I don't think I'll do it because a lot of the races, you know, um, around us at the moment, you know, it's like, uh, you know. Most of them uh, don't want to talk to us anyway, right? <laughs> well, I mean, true allies, uh, you know, they don't intervene within the world, you know, whatsoever. You know, I mean, right. our true allies are very, very far from here. What you see within the world now are all of the, the pirates and, right. you know, the, the right. bad ones. You know, because there's a certain procedure and a protocol to, um, you know, to actually getting into contact with races. And one of the things is ultimately when that race has reached a certain point, you know, then, uh, you know, of its own, you know, volition, it will want to contact the races around it. But most of this is actually, you know, it's always done off world on space stations and, uh, you know, off world, you know, so, the, uh, you know, the space itself isn't uh, invaded and stuff. And, uh, you know, so there's no ambiguity to what's actually going on, if you know what I mean. It's like, you know, the selfs, uh, you know, the people themselves, they have to set the terms of engagement. Otherwise, the, if you don't, you're already within, uh, you know, a, a sea that's already deeper than you could ever know. 
basically. You know? So that you know, so the good race, benevolent racers, always you know they give guidance from afar, but they will never intervene because they know it's our job, and you know it's up to us to do the work. And ultimately, it's a personal journey as well between us and you know God the Creator, and as a collective humanity as well. So a lot of benevolent racers are actually far from here, and they'd never come here. A lot of the ones who are coming here are actually the dark masquerading as light, you know, but they never reveal themselves as the dark because they, uh, obviously, people won't accept evil, you know, if it's in the face, but they will accept them if it presents itself as a friend or something, you know, so right. that's kind of how things are operating within this world at the moment, you know, and, right. um, you know, I mean, like we were speaking about earlier about dimensional spaces for evil, it's like, uh, if you're very naive about how things work in the universe, because we are within a very... Uh, predatory universe and it's a highly competitive environment and on a, on a macrocosmic level just like the microcosmic world that we're in now it's a direct reflection what's happening on earth now is actually happening around us as well so it's not just some fairy tale fantasy world where every every being's living on a high estate or something you know which is one of the great um, a lot of alien races are using that against the human race to get control and get a foot you know, like a beachhead within the world itself to start manipulating people, you know. But I see um, the actual disclosure movement as, you know, I, I actually personally see it as one of the main vehicles for the alien intervention itself within the world. So, you know, I've got like a completely opposite uh, view when it comes to, you know, Greer and, you know, that kind of thing at the moment because I un uncovered over many, many different uh, years many different, uh, you know, startling facts as well. And I even put them into... Um, a transcendent series that I created many years ago and it covered the disclosure project and uh, you know what it used to be called and stuff and actually went in depth into this as well and showed that it has deep links to the Rockefeller you know the Rockefeller initiative I think it was called right. back a long time ago and it had right. deep links to the Rockefellers and the Rockefellers and everybody and the uh, the Rothschilds are the actual ones who are yep. actually uh, um, subjugating humanity in the first place yep. so uh, you know, then I found a lot of links to, you know, ancient Sumeria and the Owl of Moloch and stuff, and uh, the ancient demonic uh, forces, which is the Shatu, which is what I'm actually speaking about, oh, okay. which is, whatever the plan is, they've been planning it for many, many thousands of years. Oh, yeah, know. absolutely. Yeah, it's been, it's been going on for a, a long time, and even, even uh, Dr. Greer was talking about uh, the cover-up of, like, Roswell and everything since then, that there's been, for 70 years, they've been, uh, you know, a running... Uh, this show and doing what they're doing now and that this goes back and ties back to even further like you said thousands of years where these people ran things at the turn of the century when Ford I, I say this every time it's a quote that I tell you that that uh, that Ford when you know he was making his vehicles at the time he was going to run them on batteries not on on fossil fuels he wasn't going to use he needed some oil to uh, for to, to you know to oil some of the grease some of the machines but he wasn't going to run on gasoline <clears throat> he built his machine and it was battery operated but who owned the oil fields that was the Rockefellers right wasn't it the Rockefellers they owned the oil so they they went to uh, the other companies in Europe and said make your vehicles on fossil fuels and then uh, Ford had to change because otherwise people were going to be not wanting to buy his batteries they were going to want to buy the stuff over there because they were working at the time with electricity and who owned electricity his buddy, right? So they were going to out him just like they outed Tucker in the 40s when Tucker was building a vehicle that had all the safety features that are on vehicles today. But he did that in 1945, 46, and 47. And there's like uh, 10 Tucker vehicles left in the world. Watch the movie. There's a movie called Tucker. Uh, Jeff Bridges plays uh, Tucker. And uh, the, all these guys went against him and went to the, to the uh, uh, metal companies and said, don't sell him steel. So he can't manufacture his car. They went to the rubber companies and said, don't sell him rubber. They went to the gas companies and said, don't sell him fuel. Okay? And they all got together and did that. And they did that to Ford. Ford said, back at the turn of the century, he was probably, it must have been 1920, 1930, Ford said that if Americans knew how the world economy actually worked, there would be a revolution today. That was more than 110 years ago when he said that. Yeah, and it's true, and, uh, you know, that's not just a, a one-case thing either, you know, they've been doing right. it the entire time, you know, because, uh, you know, look at it this way, first of all, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know you've, you've got God the Creator, and it's created this 
beautiful, benevolent uh, creation, you know, directly out of love, you know, out of its own body, you know, uh, right. you know, didn't create the universe, it became the universe. Right. Everything, you know, that we have, you know, we are part of the body of God, basically. Right. Every single atom, every single thought or emotion is all connected to the source from whence we came and stuff. And, uh, you know, evil itself only survives and thrives within an environment of disharmony in a dimensional space where there is a disharmonious resonance because it is a disease. You know, it's a disharmony. So therefore, it can't. Um, you know, it can't uh, unless it creates like this. You know, disharmony within the harmony that is God. You know, within that perfection and that creation, it can't actually exist. Right. You know. So, um, you know but I mean, one of the good things about this is, in a healthy creation, if it's uh, you know created and it's uh, then corrupted and there's disharmony and disease within it, you know the earth itself, because it's got its own consciousness, or even the creation itself, or you know through the benevolent powers of God, the Master Creator, you know it will be corrected by some higher power. Then people have to realise as well that this isn't judgment. This is the way it has to be because. You know, all life is one, so if it's not this way, then all life and all dimensions would be at risk and would be, you know, completely destroyed if it wasn't this way. So, um, you know, that's the way that God's kind of set up the game as well. Like, you know, it always auto-corrects itself because there's so many buffer zones and so many buffers and safety procedures, even within the fabric of reality and creation itself, that, you know, if it was to get, like, really disharmonious, you know, to a certain level, it would swing back again. You know, like an elastic bang, like elastic, you know, flicking back. Right, right, right. I agree with that 100%. And it's true. And the 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 entire concept of what he's talking about, guys, is, is not new. He's not coming up with something that's brand new, and this is something Daniel made up. This is the reality of, of what everything really is. When you, If you go to these, these modern-day uh, churches... They're more like cults anyways. They, they always have been. They're not going to teach you uh, self-empowerment because they want you just like uh, Jesus. If you guys want to look at that Bible, the, the New Testament, Jesus fought against that. He was talking about self-empowerment, just like Daniel's talking about. And I know I've said this before, and Daniel was like, whoa, Leo, don't compare me to Jesus. <laughs> but... but it, it, they, those guys were talking about uh, trying to keep you uh, coming to their place and giving them money and worshiping them. And you, you can't worship God unless you come to our box and worship in our box. And Jesus was teaching self-empowerment, teaching that you don't need to do that, that you need to, that you need to worship on your own. You need to get yourself enlightened. And so what Daniel's teaching now is not a brand new message. This has been other people have been teaching this throughout time. And again, I, I'm not trying to equate Daniel with Jesus. He doesn't like me to do that. He gets kind of annoyed when I do that because uh, other people get annoyed and say hey, Daniel's not Jesus. No, he's not. And he doesn't claim to be. He never he never equated himself that way at all. It's me that uh, and a couple other people that have said, you know, your message is kind of like Jesus's. And he's like, whoa. Right. So j just so you guys know, it's not I'm trying to show you that it's not a brand new message and that other people, not just Jesus. There's been other people, you know, Mohammed has come out and said the same. There's other there's other deities. There's other figures out there who are teaching the same message of love, the same message of self empowerment. Look at the Quran. Look at the, the, the all of the Quran is the same way. All of the the atonements that are out there that are based on the Judeo Christian uh, Bible. Usually, if you pay attention, they're teaching self empowerment. Even the Old Testament that the Hebrews used that they got from from Moses was self empowerment. Moses was self empowerment. It was the churches themselves that corrupted that and turned that into you have to come to us. And we'll tell you what to do and what to think. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that's been happening since the dawn of time that Daniel's talking about. The churches are involved in it. The churches have been doing it. They keep you, they keep you uh, just learning what they want you to learn and only knowing what they want you to know and not going off. There was a time in the Catholic religion that you couldn't own your own Bible. Because they didn't want you reading it. They only wanted you to know what they told you. That's the truth. And, and then, of course, they only did it in Latin until uh, uh, 50 years ago. And then they decided to start doing it in English. Now, if that's not control, I don't know what is. So I'm not trying to say those religions are wrong because the idea is correct. Some people say Jesus never existed. I don't care if he did or he didn't. The idea and the message that Jesus is portraying is the important thing. Whether that man actually existed or not, doesn't matter. Whether, whether any of that's true, whether it's all made up, whether everything Moses said was made up and Moses was made up and all of that was made up, if it's all fake, it doesn't matter. The message itself is true. 
And that's what Daniel's trying to tell you. The message itself is true. There is, there is out there in the universe a, a, a entity, whether you want to call it God or you want to call it the supreme power, whatever you want to call it that makes you feel comfortable. There is a power in the universe that is positive that the people here who are in charge are trying to keep you disconnected from, and you don't know it. Okay, and this is what Daniel's trying to tell you in a nutshell. Am I wrong in that, Daniel? No, that's absolutely right. And even, uh, you know, there's natural cycles of being, you know, within the universe and, you know, other things. And, um, you know, the Gregorian calendar and uh, the Gregorian clock, for example, it's, um, you know, that basically these beings, you know, they try to disconnect you from your inner power as much as possible and in every way you're possible as well. And that's also one of the reasons why... You know, in the morning you get many different letters and bills and stuff because they're trying to break that peace within your being. You know, so you're always getting those bills for your post all of the time. You know, for loads of different things. You know, and that's one of the, they're trying to fragment you as much as possible instead of having you as a unified, concentrated being. And what I said earlier was concentration within a being is power. You know, the more concentrated energy within yourself, the more integrity you've got. The more integrity you've got, the more change and influence that you will have on, you know, all of the living systems around you. And because we're in a reality, a living reality itself, you're going to have influence upon every single mind and every single uh, part of the creation itself because you are more concentrated. You're the most powerful singularity within that area, within the creation. Therefore, all of the energies will, uh, you know, come to you, you know what I mean? They will align with your frequency and stuff. But, you know, people do need to know that there is a group of people within the world who don't want to see people shine in the brightest that they can. And sadly, they don't want to see people empowered, or what I like to see is, uh, you know, empowered, you know, empowered. Right. So, you know, I create my own living language as I go because I don't believe a lag, a, you know, language should be stagnant and um, just you know like rigid, you know, in just one set way. You know, it's got to be, it's got to have vibrancy, it's got to have presence. Presence is ultimately, you know, the most important thing in in anything. So the language of English and you know, when there's a set language, it's a dead language. But I create a living language, you know, and people should, you know, they should create a living language because as they go along, they should create their own words. They should start using their own words because then there's a, a quantum leap within the actual process of, you know, your own expansion of consciousness as well and your own evolution and things, you know. And uh, Yeah, I agree with that. Michael it, Tellinger, just as, a, as an example, and then I'll let you continue. Michael Tellinger loves to say, uh, like the word, you know, uh, I understand, or do you understand? He says, I don't like to use that word understand because I don't stand under anyone. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm speaking about. And when I come, uh, when I speak about um, creating spaces and contexts, you know, to exist within, it's very important that as soon as you create, a, you know, an idea or a sphere of existence, and even when you look at your own life, Look at your own sphere of existence of, you know, where you exist and where you are and see if there's any uh, space within that where, you know, these darker forces can latch onto. And if there is, you know, make sure that you're occupying that space and you don't allow, you don't allow, um, you, you know, your own naivety to, uh, you know, destroy and ultimately kill you and stuff, which is one of my lessons that I learned, you know, quite a while ago, you know, the lesson that you can't actually save anybody else right. or their life. You can, right. you can heal them and guide them into their own power, you know, so never try to save anybody because, you know, I learned the hard way, I nearly, uh, you know, died, you know, a few times from, you know, doing that until I actually learned my lesson. I'm actually very, very thankful to actually be here still. But right, it, right, I agree. It, it's, like, you know, one of the most important uh, things I want to say, though, is, you know, like, you know, one of the most important uh, spiritual lessons that people overlook and... I haven't seen any work on it, you know, very, uh, you know, not enough anyway. I mean, there's work out there that covers it, but when it comes to presence, you know, presence is everything, you know, not having that space inside yourself for uh, darkness to enter into, that's the most important thing. You've got to stand fully in your own integrity and occupy yourself indefinitely all of the time, fully, you know. So how present are you to yourself, you know? Yeah. You know, that's one of the most, you know, most profound spiritual questions that one can ask is, you know, how present are you even to this moment right now? You know, because if you're not present to yourself, how are you going to be able to give presence to anybody else around you in your life or in the environment or place in which you live either, you know? And like I was saying earlier, concentration is power in a being. So you've got to be present to yourself 
you know, as much as you can, because everything in life comes down to this, you know, for, you know, love itself is presence, basically. Right, absolutely. Well said, well said. And uh, guys, listen to what he just said, because it's the, the honest truth. Everything, everything that he's saying right there in that comment was, was 100% true. And you, you have to be true to yourself, you have to be present. And that way, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> The only way that they can try and get to you, like he said, the, the only way that darkness can get to you is if, is if you're not, if you're open to that because you're not, you're not present in, in yourself. So it doesn't, you don't have to fight and combat evil or darkness. They have less power. They have less power. They want to pretend that they don't. In all the movies, like you know, with Star, Trek, with Star Wars, the, the dark side always tries to say that they have more power. They don't. And if you look at the difference, and this is, I love this, and, and Daniel, I know because when you and I with the uh, uh, Jedi, um, and, you know, if you didn't see our last show uh, before, Daniel took one look at my beard and knew that I was a Jedi, and I am a Jedi. I'm listed in the Jedi school in, in New Zealand. And <laughs> the, the ideology that was so, so, so out of, he was the only person that's ever looked at me and said, you're a Jedi, aren't you? And I went, whoa, yes, wow, how do you know that? He said, you're, you got the beard. And I said, yeah, but you, you're not supposed to know that. But, he, but he's, he's in the striving Jedi. Um, there's some of us that are out there that, that, that confess to that. Now, if you look at, and, and, and I know I'm going to use this analogy, but it was a movie, but if you look at when Qui-Gon Jinn was, was fighting the Sith, and they were, uh, uh, they were there, and it was Qui-Gon and, um, and Obi-Wan, and they had gotten separated because they, they were in between those uh, uh, barriers that were up that were laser barriers, and they couldn't. And the difference between the two, it, Qui-Gon sat down, knelt down in the lotus position, and meditated while he was waiting for those to open. He was on his knees with his saber off, with his eyes closed, and the Sith was prancing back and forth like a tiger overlooking his prey, right? And just trying to act like he was just the evil, and he was just... But you know what? He got nothing for it, okay? He got nothing for it because as soon as the doors opened, Qui-Gon actually was able to get up off the ground, open his eyes, light his saber, and block the blow before he could even hit him. Now, I know that ultimately you're going to say, well, ultimately Qui-Gon was killed. Okay, well, ultimately Qui-Gon was killed. In the real universe, he probably wouldn't have been. In the movie, they had to move the movie along, and Qui-Gon needed to die so that Obi-Wan could become the mentor, so that when they found Anakin, Obi-Wan was the mentor, because that's how it worked, because of the book, the way the books ran. Okay, so that was the storyline to keep you going as an author. I know that. That's what you do, right? But in the reality of the world, even if it did happen, it was supposed to happen to inspire Obi-Wan, just like when Obi-Wan died, it happened to inspire Luke and to keep the passion going and things, and you have to understand that. So the difference, my point here is, that if you're calm and in the moment and in the, and in the presence, then you're not going to be overcome by the evil, and that was that scene. I know it was a long, drawn-out explanation to, to get where Daniel was going, but I just wanted to give you guys that because everybody's seen those movies just about. All right, Daniel, I'm sorry. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, you know, it's like you says, though, uh, you know, you've got it spot on, you know, because ultimately, you know, you know, this is a profound saying as well. And that is that, um, you know, God is still, you know, everything else is in motion. So if you want to connect to the highest power, then you've got to become still, you know, and not only, you know, do you become still within yourself, you know, and, uh, you know, connect to that inner power. But as soon as you become, you know, as strong and as powerful within as yourself, you know, as you possibly can, you know, and also learn to say no, because if anybody's trying to corrupt you or take you from, you know, the golden path, is what I like to call it, of your soul, you know, you've got to be internally strong and externally strong as well, you know, eventually. But, you know, that comes later. Because I always say as well, you know, when those who love um, peace... You know, those who are good and love peace can organize as good as those who are evil and love war. Only then shall there be peace, you know, within the world. So I always say, do, you know, don't allow a space outside yourself. And also don't allow a distortion of space even within yourself either to exist, you know. Because, you know, the forces of darkness try to create this beachhead, you know, and try to attach and bind to you. So it's like we said last time, uh, Leonard, when we were talking about spiritual armor. You know, it's very important to wear your spiritual armor and strengthen it daily to, you know, to be immune to all of these attacks. Right, and absolutely. Then, yeah, they're all successful attempts you know, on trying to make you, uh, you know, weaker. You know, eventually they just won't bother with you. Or right. every time 
they try to use energy against you, you can turn it up on its head and use it against them. For example, every time they deleted one of my YouTube channels, I'd make two YouTube channels. <laughs> every time they uh, did something else, I'd make two of them. Right. So every time they attacked me, I'd also always focus more energy and tension onto that specific point. So every time I was under attack or whatever, by any force or whatever, they always uh, they back off because they're not doing anything apart from making me stronger and making it worse for themselves. You know, and also I use anything that they fire against them anyway. So right. you know, it's not good for them, is it? Right. You know? And it's far easier, uh, you know, like he said, to, to literally just uh, uh, turn it over uh, on its end and send it right back to them. You have to, you have to understand how that works. And when they send this energy and negative energy towards you or at you, you just have to, to literally uh, flip it over and send it back. Now, Josie made a comment in the in, uh, what we're talking about just a second ago. She says they're trying as much as they can to keep uh, uh, to keep up the image that they're in power, but it's a lie. They're they're losing they're losing uh, big time, and that's the truth. They're, they're they're trying to keep up the image that they're in control and that they're in power, and and the same thing was with the dark side in the in the movies and the, and the in the dark side of of reality is they're they're trying to they're trying to tell us that they're in charge but if they were really in charge you know i say this all the time and i know a lot of people have a problem with gun control but if they were really in charge there were still wouldn't be 280 million guns in america because it would have taken them from us already but the fact that we have these guns in america is that it shows that they're they're not they're not as brave as they think they are they're not as in charge as they think they are because the second they decide to use the military in america to start kicking in doors they would literally have to try and do what they tried to do to the Knights Templar. They would literally have to try and find out who has every gun and have at least four or five people standing at all of their doors at the exact same time and kick in every door in the United States of America at the exact same time. And the, and the, the idea of them being able to do that in a country this large with this many people without getting caught and without uh, Americans knowing about it is nil. That's why they haven't done it. And if they start doing it, there'll be a revolution in America in a, in a second, two million people in the last 10 years have, have moved out of the cities and started living off grid in the United States. And that's just how many they know have done it. I know there's more than that because I'm on the channels and I'm on the chat and I talk to those people. Ex-military, guys who are in the military complex get out and the first thing they do is take their family and they run them out into the wilderness somewhere and start living off the grid and, and living where people just don't know where they are. And there's groups that are living in the mountains and they're telling each other military guys that are telling other military guys on sites that the government doesn't know about, move here when you get done. This is going to be a safe zone if something happens. So that should tell you something. And I'm not trying to, to create fear. What I'm trying to show you is that there's people that are being proactive out there that are ensuring and standing on a wall that you don't know is happening, and they're fighting a war that you guys don't know is happening, and that Daniel knows, and that I know, and that some of you do know, that there is a war that's going on and has been going on for thousands of years, and you guys can't see it. And, and they try to tell you this in movies like, uh, you know, you like, like uh, what was that movie uh, uh, with uh, Keanu Reeves where, um, uh, I can't think of the, the name of the, of the movie now, but uh, where, he, where he was fighting the war against evil and no one could see it. And uh, Rachel Weisz was in it and all of a sudden she could see the demons and they weren't supposed to. There's a war going on right now that uh, Constantine, thank you, whoever just threw that into my head, uh, Constantine, thank you, um, uh, there's a war going on that you guys don't know about that we need to take back ourselves and our, as a species here on this planet because those people are trying to sell us off, lock, block, and, and tackle, okay? And we're, we're, we're needing to not be their slaves. They think that, that we're slaves. We need to prove that they're not. If you want disclosure and you want aliens uh, to be communicating with you, you need to, you need to fix yourself. You can't just look to the government and say, take more charge of me, take more charge of us, and oh, by the way, um, while you're at that, tell us about aliens now, or else, or else what? you got nothing. They look at you and say you got nothing because you are nobody. You're sickly, you're weak, you, you think you're going to be uh, uh, at any moment taken over by the devil because, you, because I, I made you believe that, and that's what they make you believe. So anyway, am I wrong in that, Daniel? I'm just ranting here. No, it's uh, it's good stuff, you know, and I enjoy, you know, listening to what you say as well. And, you know, no matter, you know, what the self-proclaimed elites and the shadow government and all the allies do, you know, it all seems to, be, you know, be backfiring on them anyway. You know, on the surface, it looks like their plans are working. 
But when you really look deeper, you know, into the core of it, you know, you realize that, you know, the plans actually aren't working. You know, they've had their day already. You know, they're hanging on to the last threads of what they once had. And they're creating the last stand, basically. That's what I call it. You know, the last stand in battle, you know, when you do everything you can to fight for the last, uh, you know, moment and you try not to lose. And one of the big differences in the world today is that people are awakening, you know, en masse. And it's like no other time in history, yep. you know, because, you know, the people uh, go within and they don't concentrate on the chaos within the world. And, you know, the, the, if they're focused upon their own empowerment and empowerment, you know, the more power and, uh, you know, the more people that can create this energy, the more reality will actually respond to that energy as well. And then there's no place, there's no longer any space for negative hierarchical structures or control systems to exist, you know, in that space anymore. They're just not sustainable. And, right. uh, you know, right. one of the reasons why... You know, that's one of the reasons why everybody needs to really be in true relationship with the inner self. And, uh, you know, through the outer hardship of all of this stuff going on, it actually forges internal determination. And it actually, in, uh, it actually creates inner resilience and stronger bonding. You know, and it's this bind of doing things together as a human race and being present to one another in life, you know, that creates and pulls, you know, everything forwards and you know, actually creates that unity and makes the bond stronger anyway. So, you know, it's right. a prime importance that uh, every day as well that people, you know, one of the most important things is that people create their willpower every single day as well because willingness, you know, is expansion itself. You know, so make sure that you're creating willpower, you know, and make sure that you know your own power as well. Yeah, you know, in Absolutely. Self. I want to point out that, that uh, when I said, uh, Constantine, thank you to whoever was that that, pointed, that put that in my head, I looked over the chat and there was nothing in the chat, and I thought to myself, Josie, and I was almost going to say, thank you, Josie, for putting that into my head, and I looked back and it popped up in the chat, so she was thinking it and typing it, and I caught it and said, Constantine, thank you for whoever that was, and then in my mind, I knew that it was Josie, but there was nothing in the chat, so I didn't say it out loud, so I just want to point that out, uh, that I picked that up and then saw it in the chat, and I looked at the chat, there was nothing there said thank you for whoever put that into my head and my brain said that was Josie didn't say anything until I saw it just now so I wanted to point that out so that was kind of rocking I wanted to, to say that but yeah that's you know the, the truth is like Daniel saying the, the truth is that that if you look at any kind of war that's going on anywhere in any movie you'll notice that you know you know how the, the people say this is dark darkest just before the dawn if you look at all these movies, even going back to the Star Wars movies, the Star Trek movies, every movie that you see, you'll find that the dark side puts everything they have when they know they're losing, everything they have into what's going on. And it's so overwhelming that the light side thinks they're losing. But there's a few people who don't believe that and they know that they can get the job done in, in, in overwhelming odds. And it looks horrible, and it looks like there's no way out, and you're not going to make it. And then there's those few people who refuse. Like I said, they refuse to believe that because they know we're stronger than that, and we're going to defeat you. And it's just a matter of your, you know, who, hooperous is, is a great thing. Is it because you can you, you, people who are who are innately dark or or negative or evil? They have a very big ego. Okay, so ego um, gives light to hooperus. Hooperus is, if you don't know what that is, hooperus is uh, when someone, because of their ego, they're very easy to fool, they're easy to trick, and they're easy to go into doing something. If you can get somebody angry, you can make them do what you want because they'll be so frustrated with you that they're just trying to, uh, trying to, to win. And they'll go and do everything they can do to try to hurt you, and they usually burn themselves out. And that's exactly what happens. And what's happening now in this in this world is, you, you know, we went from one one uh, era, uh, and we're moving into another era. And I talked about this. I talk about this on every show because it's true. If you look at 2012, the Mayans wrote a calendar and showed that this era ended. Baktun 12 ended, and we're moving into Baktun 13. And Right now, we're in the transitional phase. Dr. Stephen Greer talked about this as well. With, we're in the transitional phase. That era has ended, but the new era hasn't begun yet. So because we're in the transitional phase before the new era begins, the darkness is trying to do everything they can to prove that they're in charge and that they rule and that we have no hope. Okay? 
And the, that's the opposite of the truth. If we just continue the course and, and better ourselves and realize they're not in charge and we will do what we're going to do and we're going to make this happen, we will have a utopia soon. We just have to change a few things, which means we have to literally just do it. We have to stop being lazy and we have to say, we need to recycle. We need to, to change what we're using and stop using fossil fuels. What if we tell them just to stop? When people got mad and said, we need something else, all of a sudden, they started making hybrid cars. All of a sudden, they started making biofuel. Where do you think that came from? That didn't come because the government decided to do it. It became, it became because people said, I want it, and we demanded it. So we need to demand more. Now, you guys don't know this, but Brazil... The entire country of Brazil does not use fossil fuel to run their vehicles. The entire country of Brazil has some for those people who want it, but they run on sugar cane. They took sugar, which they grow there, and they created a, a gasoline, a, some sort of biofuel, out of sugar, and that's what they use. They're self-sufficient. You don't know this because the American government's not going to tell you this. You don't know this because the English government's not going to tell you this. You don't know this because no government in Europe is going to tell you this, because they want you on fossil fuels. Am I wrong, Daniel? Are you there, yeah. buddy? Yeah, that's right, yeah, I was there. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I just had, to, just had to close my door. <laughs> oh, all right, and I caught you at the very wrong time, didn't I? I apologize for that. So I was just telling them that about uh, uh, the fossil fuels in, the, in Brazil and how the people in Brazil are running on sugarcane, but the governments aren't going to tell you that because they want you on fossil fuels because they want the status quo. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. They, uh, you know, I mean, the powers that were is what I call them, not the powers that be, you know, the powers right. that were. You know, because like I said, it's the context thing again. You've got to put things in the proper context, you know, of the way things are, you know, and empower yourself by, you know, simultaneously, you know, disempowering those who are actually, you know, trying to take control over everybody, over everybody you know. I mean, there's no reason to use language that would empower them. So always right. use terms and words you that would dis them. Absolutely. Them. Good, good we idea. Good, time. good idea, buddy. It's the environmental space, you know, you know, the actual space, the creational space itself that's very important. Like I said, it's uh, it's a battle of wills, you know, willpower and uh, presence, and uh, make your willpower stronger, you know, and theirs weaker as well at the same time, you know. And uh, if you become a very powerful, concentrated being within yourself, and one of the ways to do this is to not only get rid of all the negative aspects of yourself that no longer serve you, and uh, all the all the things that are working in your life, make sure you keep doing, and all the things that aren't working within your life, you know, get rid of and phase out and replace them in that space with things that actually are working and that do serve you and stuff, you know. And some things that serve other people may not serve you, and some things that served you in the past may not serve you now, you know. But always, you know, be present within each moment to yourself as closely as possible. Me, myself, I personally, I meditate every single day, and I have done for years. And I check in with uh, my higher self every single hour as well. So, you know, I've uh, forged a very powerful, strong relationship with my higher self. And that's actually what spawned all of my work in the first place. You know, I mean, that all comes from the higher self. You know, like, uh, you know, my work came to me and I, I received it night and day. You know, it wasn't just within the day. It was any time, you know, that it wanted to. You know, I just woke up in the middle of the night, sometimes for three hours, and just had all of this information. I just had to write down there and then. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to be written down. You know, I would have forgot it. So I did this for many, many, uh, you know, a long time. And, um, right. you know, it comes down to the capacity for truth as well. You know, it's like, if you, you know, like, um, you know, one of the guys said a while ago, if you've got a golf ball-sized consciousness, you'll have a golf ball-sized awareness. But if you can expand, your, you know, you, uh, your consciousness, you know, to incorporate more, then it's going to expand, you know. And uh, consciousness never shrinks back to its original dimensions, you know, once it's expanded anyway. So, you know, once you've expanded your consciousness, it will, um, you know, always be like that. And, you know, I always say to people, you know, the true fabric of reality you know, like we're speaking about all these powers that were, you know, it has no uh, beginning, middle or end anyway, you know, time and space is a never ending, you know, spiral into infinity. And, uh, you know, one of the other things you need to know is, you know, life is not a straight line of success, you know, and the human condition is, you know, it's imperfect with perfection within, you know, within the center of it. But, you know, that, that perfect, you know, perfect part within inside yourself, you know, the part of you that never left God, that's the part of you that you must tap you know, and cultivate every day and be brought forth into the world, 
you know, because at the center, everybody is a pure energy being, you know, so you need to get into true alignment and true relationship with this part of yourself. So, you know, life is a battle after battle, you know, and trial after trial and defeat after defeat. But it's about taking everything life throws at you and keep moving, you know, forwards, keep moving onwards, keep moving upwards indefinitely without question, you know, and each time you do that, you're a little closer to your true self. You know, you refine your being into that which you already are within the core of, you know, yourself. And you will be manifesting your greatest, most powerful expression of love while you're within the world, you know, through this journey of truth that you're going through, you know. And, uh, you know, one of the other most important things I need to get across is that, you know, you attract to things, you know, negative and positive as well, you know, while you're within the universe because the universe itself is a mirror for projections of yourself, both good and bad. You know, so like attracts like is the name of the game for everything. So don't allow your thoughts to be on anything that you don't want. You know, you attract everything, including your fears, you know, and what you fear and what you think, you know, it magnetizes to you, you know, over time. So it's up to you to be aware of yourself fully each moment, you know, present, you know, moment to moment and upon all levels as well, you know. So. Absolutely. I, uh, John Gilbert said, and this was we're getting back to when we're talking about the powers of being, he said, uh, uh, it was well said, he says, well said, Daniel, about the powers that be, uh, last stand. How great is it uh, for us to have uh, the, uh, the entire history at our fingertips, literally, and uh, to uh, uh, conduct proper research and fight back against uh, the, the evil empires. And, and that's exactly right. Because of our technology, and we talked about this, I think, in our other show, um, you and I did, if not, it was uh, uh, on one of the other shows, how now, I think it was you and I, how now uh, we were not able to use, uh, we didn't have the, the, like the Internet in a long time ago, so uh, not too long ago, so we weren't able to um, reach as many people as we can reach now so quickly. And now we can use this uh, technology that they're trying to use to control us. We're now able to use this technology because now we have that, that literally at the in our fingertips we can look up everything in the entire world that ever happened all the history and we can have this like we, like I have here where we have this outlet to be able to uh, deliver this message your message to the world and to put it out there on 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 the world wide web where they can't delete it because it's out there forever and so well said uh, John um, and well said Daniel go ahead buddy. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm doing this, you know, because it's adding permanence to my work. You know, it can't be just, um, you know, deleted. I can't have, like, tens of millions of views, like 150 million views just deleted and erased, you know, any time they feel like it, you know, over the years. I can't just have, like, multiple accounts, like uh, 50 YouTube channels over the years, you know, that spaced an entire war over the last decade. You know, they can't just delete them now because it's in book form, it's in the world, it's permanent, it's in libraries, you know, it's in uh, universities, it's on right. books. It's not going anywhere, you know, so, you know, they failed, you know, and, uh, you yeah, know, I said I the mean, same thing about, about my books, you know, no matter what happens in life now, um, like you said, that I have these shows that are on the air and, and I have books and they're in the library of Congress and they have a number and they're in, in library books and they're in, in bookstores, just like you said. So no matter what happens to me in life, there's still a part of me that's going to survive. That is a message that I'm delivering. That is a positive message. That is this message. And you're the same way. They, they can't, they can't erase you now, no matter how hard they try. You're, you're in all corners of the world and it's near new. You won't be able to be erased. They can't erase you. They might be able to take and erase your uh, YouTube page. They might maybe even be able to come and, and, and erase you personally by, you know, by shooting you or strangling you or doing something and killing you. But you're, you're, you're still there. Your message is still out to the world, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's, there's so many people out there now that are actually using all of my, uh, you know, my books as well, you know, in their lives and stuff. So, you know, it's, um, it's like many, many different people now are actually taking on board, you know, what's been said. And they know that they can use them as tools for their own advancement. And it will be one hell of an advancement as well, because, you know, not only is there like practical wisdom within there, but there's information that expands, you know, um, the perceptions as well of everybody in every area as well, you know. So, uh, yeah, and yeah, it's, and it's you know, I remember that it wasn't too long ago um, when uh, when I got a um, I was I was receiving a um, a payment from uh, Amazon for because I put the book up on Kindle myself so that it doesn't go through uh, 
my publisher. It comes straight to me. And uh, I was getting uh, money that was coming in from overseas, and I had sold my first book in Japan. And I went, wow, somebody in Japan bought my book. You know, and and it's being sold in bookstores in, in London. And I went, what, who are these people? And it, somebody bought my book and put it in a bookstore in London. And I went, wow, my book's being sold in the U.K. And, you know, so for Daniel, I'm sure it was the same way when you get a, you get a, you know, I don't know if, if, if you were, had that moment, but I did when I was, when I realized that I had sold a book in Japan. I was, I was kind of giddy. <laughs> I did, I did, I do, I do. I get it. <laughs> Isn't that something you said? I, I sold yeah, a book I'm, in I'm, Norway I'm, I'm, and went, I'm, how did my book end up in Norway? I was like, all right, isn't that cool? I know, it's really, really funny to me. It just makes me laugh, and, you know, I'm laughing about it now. I was laughing about it this morning because, you know, some of my books, you know, they've wound it up in India, right. uh, in libraries, right. and in universities. <laughs> I'm like, how did they get there? You know, it's like an right. network, but it's, like, really funny because, like, uh, in the third book, I did a hell of a lot of research. Like, the other two, like, they mostly came from my higher self and, you know, that relationship that I spawned, you know, I, I you know, I create a nice, vibrant field of wisdom within myself where, you know, these little, I say, like, plants of wisdom, you know, just spawn themselves, you know, and then I just pick them, you know, at certain times so or they just come to me and then I write them down, you know, as gifts for everybody. But, um, you know, like, my books have made it to uh, India, you know, they've made it to, uh, I've even sent one to Brian Forster nice. in... Uh, as well my first one because i thought you know what better way to have you you know your wisdom preserved in all these places and right. i'm always thinking about where can i preserve my wisdom in all these uh, best places and stuff and i know there's a guy as well who actually every time i release a book he actually buys seven copies of it and actually distributes them all around the brazilian jungle and stuff so wow. <laughs> i was actually i, I actually well. interviewed him and i was and i was just talking to him to interview him and uh, he just sent me a, a reply back saying that he uh, isn't going to be doing interviews for a while because he's working uh, with some guys uh, on a project, uh, um, it's a book and uh, I think a, a documentary about the pyramids because his theory right now, he just wrote a book about it, was uh, about the uh, pyramids being a water pump. And I guess he's gotten together with several other scientists who are working on that. So um, that's funny that you, that you bring him up because I was just in contact with him the other day going, hey, when am I going to have you on the show? And he's like, oh, hey, you got to wait. you got to wait until we get done with what I'm working on and then we'll, we'll, we'll bring it out to the people. So that's cool that he buys your book. I wish he would buy my book and distribute it to the people out there. Josie in the chat says exactly when we were talking about our technology. She says exactly, I'm walking around my garden while listening to you guys. Isn't this technology amazing? Great times we live in. Isn't that cool? She's walking around her garden and she's listening to us uh, on the show yeah that's great you know and i always say you know as well uh you know when it comes to creativity and stuff you know there's always going to be a back door you know to creativity because that's a part of our very soul you know so no sooner do they try to clamp down on one area and control one area you know because we're humans and we're very intelligent anyway you know when we're actually using that intelligence then you know a new area is going to spring forth that we can uh, then present our free, uh, you know creativity through you know and uh, we're all born of creative imagination and there's no stopping you know that part of ourselves basically so right and that you know and and it's just I think we just need to get the knowledge out there more often to people and you know you guys don't have to buy into it right away because everybody's walking their own path uh, to enlightenment and some people maybe in this lifetime you guys uh, that's not what you're here to learn in this lifetime but it'll get into your head through osmosis I said that last time it's sort of Daniel it'll get into your head through osmosis if you're not ready because you're uh, working on the mundane things of survival or you're working on things that have you know you might be having to worry about politics in this life or business and spirituality is just not what your life is about we're not trying to preach to you and we're not trying to uh, tell you, you know, sell you uh, and try to convince you. Um, that's not what we're here to do. What we're here for is for those of you who are on that path of enlightenment at some level in your, in your path to show you that there's some of us out there that are um, trying to help you as well as ourselves. But like Daniel said, I can't help you. You know, the old saying here in America is you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I can help you by um, being there and Daniel being there and for us to give you the knowledge that you're not alone 
and that we're all fighting together and that we're all uh, in, in this together and that um, there are some of us out there who um, are leading the way and there for you. That's all we can do. We're not, we're not teachers. We're guides. We're not trying to teach you anything that you don't already know or you won't already figure out. We're just trying to, to um, guide you. We're the guy that when you walk down the road, you go, which way am I supposed to go now? And we tell you, well, you can go any direction that you want to go uh, from this point. This direction will have this happen, this direction will have that happen, and this direction I don't get to tell you, you don't get to know. So we're, we're just here to guide and say, look, we're still, we're here, and we're, and well, hi, I'm, I'm where you're at now, welcome, and keep walking, and you'll find someone else further down the road who will be there as well. And that's the way it is. Some of us are walking together. Some of us are, are, are in, you know, together because we're all at the same place, and we're all at different levels, and we're all going to get there. But we just want you guys to know there is an actual... Uh, end game and that all this stuff they're pouring into your heads in the world right now you need to it's like the book the secret i bring this up every time you need to get the negative out of your mind and that's what daniel's talking about if you read his books his positive affirmation uh in, in you know his i think it's your first book daniel is all all quotes right it's all uh, inspirational quotes am i wrong in all, that all of them are it's all of them are. okay the entire book is, uh, it's like fractally, uh, you know, um, you know, compressed. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a multi-layered onion where you can read the same quotes and, you know, they've got so much energy concentrated within them very few words. So every word itself within the book is very special, if you know what I mean. It can unlock, you know, your DNA, you know. So it's not just like a book full of uh, meaningless words. Like every single word is specifically phrased that specific way for a specific purpose, you know, to trigger, you know, your DNA, your ancient memory as well with inside yourself because it all comes forth from, you know, that higher source and that higher place. So it's going to have a massive, you know, drastic effect on you just by reading it and just by, you know, participating within it. You know, and I always say as well, you know, only the core foundations within inside yourself, you know, should have any permanence. You know, everything else should be, you know, in motion. Your beliefs, your ideas, your thoughts, your language, you know, any religions that you do so choose for yourself, you know, because the multiverse itself is emotion, you know, sorry, is not only emotion, but motion as well. Right. So to evolve to as quickly as possible to the higher consciousness and awareness, you know, things should never stagnate, you know, so that's why I always come back to present as well, because everything should have presence, you know, everything should be in constant motion, ever changing, ever evolving, you know, a reflection of you and your level of truth and awareness, you know, at that specific time, so don't be held prisoner, you know, by old dogma, you know, or try to stay small to be able to fit in, you know, with everything else, it's like, uh, you know, Greer, he was right about this part, about, you know, the earth being within a transitional uh, period, you know, at the moment, because it actually is, and, uh, you know, one of the greatest things that people need to know, though, is that people, you know, enslave themselves, and all one must do is to be fully present to themselves and to others, and to the reality in which they actually find themselves to be truly free within any moment, and it's never too late, you know, every moment is a new opportunity, and, you know, every child born is a new hope as right. well. So. right. Right, absolutely, and so you guys, you could literally, you know how, uh, those of you who are uh, religious, and you've, you've seen people do this, where they take the Bible and they just, you know, they, they get a thought, say, or a question, say, and they just open the Bible and point out a passage, and then read that maybe for inspiration for the day. You can literally do this with his books. <clears throat> you, you, you can literally put out there to the universe, maybe, you know, what do I need to work on, or uh, put out to the universe, what, what, what would be a really good inspiration for me right now, and then just open up his, his book to a page and look down and read it. You can do, literally do that if you want to trust in the universe enough to, to, to give you that, and then look down and see what he uh, wrote in that passage and see how that applies to you. You can literally do that with his book, or you can read it from cover to cover and page to page and, and, and sit there and ponder um, what those things mean. But see, the beauty of it is, as you evolve, and this, and this, these are actually Daniel's words from before. As you evolve, you're going to find out that you can go back to the same book, his first book, and you can go turn page by page and read the same things and realize that you learned something new from what you learned the first time. And he encourages you to write down in a journal what it is that you learned from his passage, say, the first one, and put the date on there. Then come back a year later or six months later or three months later and read that same passage and see if it still means the same thing to you 
and you're going to find you're going to learn something different from what he wrote. So, so his book is not just a one-time off. And all these books are the same way. They're not just a one-time off. You're going to be able to come back, and you're going to see and learn things now because your perspective is going to change. You are going to change. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, every time you read it, because you yourself are different, you know, you're going to get something different from it. Because, like I said, it's practically uh, infinitely, you know, imbued with love and that energy, you know, that pure energy. So every time you engage with it, you're going to get something different from it. You know, it doesn't matter if a few seconds has passed, a few days, right. a few weeks, a few months. You're going to be, you know, it's going to be continual learning for you. You know, because these lessons as well, they're not just like lessons, uh, um, you know, you just do one day and then, you know, that's it. These are actual life, uh, you know, it's natural life, natural structure for an entirely new life, you know, a greater life for yourself. You know, so as soon as you, uh, you know, implement a few of the actual, um, you know, teachings and things into your life, you're going to feel, you know, completely, profoundly different, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the things I always say is, you know, the more present you are to yourself in each moment, you know, the more you're going to feel the energy of others as well around you. And right. you're going to trust one another and, you know, to do what makes you happy. You know, because it's the little things as well that make us and, you know, evolve us quickly, you know, when we embrace everything fully as well, you know. So, right. you know, there's many keys. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say there's many keys to, you know, creating and forging a powerful spirituality. And, you know, that all of them are covered within the Raising Eden Wisdom Trilogy that I've put together, basically, you know. So... All you need to do is make sure you learn the core keys of awareness, you know, that have been gifted, and you will be strong, powerful, and certain in yourself, you know, from this moment forward. See, and, it, and it's true. And here's an example of that. If you guys haven't seen the video, um, I have Stephen Greer's video, and it was last week now, almost a week ago now, where he did a, a Q and A after um, the, there was a webinar to show his movie that he just made, and uh, afterwards there was a Q a Q and A that I had access to, and I posted it. Uh, it's either on Orion Rising the group or Orion Rising the page. Um, go and take a look at it because there was a point, and this is what we're talking about here. Now he he claims uh, Greer claims that our uh, federal government has this you know this shadow government, and that they also have um, a, a plan for a fake UFO invasion to make us believe that um, aliens have invaded, but it's actually our people. And they actually uh, get people to dress up and look like aliens, so we think they're actual aliens. And that they're going, at some point, they're planning on rolling this out to where there's this alien invasion that comes here, and so we have to fight off this outside force so that that way we can have one world government, and they can then take control and have one world government, and that they would be, uh, at that point, in control of everything, and we would have the aliens that we're fighting against now, and they would start a war with some alien group out there uh, for no reason, just like they start wars now here on this planet with no reason, and we going to go fight against those people and they're not even really our enemy we're our own enemy but he um, was trying to blow the whistle on that and he and he says that they abduct people uh, far more than aliens actually abduct people and it's actually our people pretending to be aliens to make you think that aliens are abducting you so that you will over time everyone b becomes afraid of aliens and hates aliens and wants to attack aliens so they were trying to shut him up and he tells about this and this is why I bring this up they, and, and you'll see how it fits into to what Daniel's saying. They were trying to shut him up from blowing the whistle on it, so they actually came to his hotel room and tried to abduct him. And that he's sitting, and he describes this, and he's sitting in his hotel room, and this beam of light, first thing he said was it was silent in his room, and all of a sudden there was a, a click in the air, an audible click, as if somebody flipped a light switch, and you know how some of the light switches, when you turn on, they actually go, clack. He heard that and looked around and realized that he was in trouble and that they were going to try something. So he saw this beam of light coming towards him. I think he said it was a pink or red beam of light coming towards him, and he knew that if they hit him with that light, they were going to try and abduct him, literally abduct him into the spaceship and then either try and scare him or, or whatever. So he started meditating. And he said, and he started meditating and he used his meditation and his sheer willpower and said, no, they are not going to be able to take me. I refuse to go. And he literally took his soul, his self, his body, and decided that I am going to become the ocean. One drop they can take, but they cannot abduct the entire ocean. And he spread his energy out to the entire world and said, I am the ocean. 
and we are one and they can't take us all. And he said they tried four or five times to abduct him and they could not do it. And then when it was over, he was sitting there and he was, you know, obviously shaken from this ordeal. And then he heard another clack. And then all of a sudden he got uh, physically ill. He physically had to crawl. He had a headache. He felt like he was going to vomit and thought he was going to uh, uh, poop himself. Had to c- claw- crawl to the toilet where, of course, he had, you know, uh, uh, diarrhea and threw up and, and had this migraine headache. And, again, he, he knew that it was them. They were now using some force on him to punish him for not allowing them to kidnap him. And he then had to meditate again. And this went on for about 15 minutes as he meditated. And then it literally stopped and he was perfectly fine, and his headache was gone, and they left him alone. Watch that video. And that is what Daniel just said. Empower yourself to the point that you can combat them, and you are stronger than them, and they cannot defeat you. I know, again, that was a long story, but if you watch the video, it will blow your mind. And Daniel just told you the same thing that Dr. Greer told you, and he told you in an analogy by telling you the story. And I did the same thing using an analogy telling you the story. So go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, well, I mean, you're absolutely right as well, you know, we are far more powerful, you know, than any of this darkness and evil, you know, and that's the very reason why all this is done to us in the first place, because our power is, you know, unlimited, you know, and, uh, you know, every day as well, you know, it all comes back to presence again, you know, and being present within yourself, you know, because even Greer then, you know, I, I've had the same kind of things that's happened to me uh, in various uh, things, you know, the exact same kind of experience, right. you know. And, uh, I, you know, I just know that the, the, the antidote is, it, is to center inside yourself and know that you have unlimited power, you know, know that you are the ocean, know that you, you know, right. you are powerful than any being that's trying to abduct you or take you anywhere. And also you're more powerful than any weapon or any, um, you know, thing that can be fired at you as well. Right. You know, so people worry about mind control within the world and, you know, all this kind of stuff and, uh, you know, control grids going over humanity and stuff. You know, they shouldn't be afraid because, you know, we are far more powerful than any, you know, directed beam weapon that can be fired at us. Anyway, you know, consciousness is far more powerful. You know, your willpower can be far more power, you know, powerful. So, you know, the only thing you need to do is be more present to yourself. You know, that's the most important thing out of anything, you know. And I know I've said it a few times, but that is the ultimate yeah, but thing. But you can't say it enough. You can't say it enough. I agree. Go ahead, buddy. Exactly. So, you know, every day you need to build capacity for your truth and the different things, you know, through the process of being and doing every single day. You know, just practice and practice and practice and practice, you know. Keep practicing, you know, and being with yourself. And make sure that you take time out for yourself, you know, not only every single day, but try to, you know, even set your, your mobile phone or something so that each hour you can, you know, buzz in with yourself and make that connection, you know, to your higher self. You know, just even for a few seconds, just take, you know, a little bit of time out for yourself, but make sure you do it because, you know, ultimately it all comes down to that self-love and creating a space in yourself. And, you know, if you haven't got, you know, time for yourself or space for yourself, how are you going to be able to, you know, love anybody else or love the creation that you're in anyway? So you need to do that anyway. And if you don't feel like doing it, do it double that day, you know? Right, right. good idea. So, yeah, don't, you know, reinforce and, you know, help build the reality of others, you know, who have no spiritual integrity and it's all based on lies, you know. Don't give them any time, don't give them any energy, don't give them any, you know, attention and don't participate on any level, you know. Build your own reality, you know, live your own reality, plant the seeds of truth while staying true, you know, to that singular truth inside yourself. And then the truth will grow and it will sprout forth you know, as an unstoppable, unshakable, unmovable force, basically, because the power of the truth, you know, has the ability to build a whole new world based on truth and love, you know, for everybody, you know, and it creates, you know, you need to be that anchor, you know, to bring that about, you know. Right, and you know, it's just like uh, I was talking about uh, just the other day, or and earlier today, it's like it's like the secret, the old that show, that television show, and that book, and that and that audio tape um, that. You know, from our birth, we are bombarded with negativity. Here in America, when you were born, the first thing they did was the doctor held you upside down and smacked you on your butt or smacked you on your back to get you to to spit out the, the last of the embryonic fluid and start breathing oxygen. So that was violence. 
first thing that happened was violence to you. And now they don't do that. Now they go and suck the stuff out and kind of shake you and blow in your face a little bit. And, and you go, <gasps> and then you start breathing and you cough up the other stuff. So they, they work with you now and it's a more natural way. But forever, <clears throat> until probably about 20 years ago, um, that's the way it was here in the United States. I don't know about the rest of the world. And so um, things were violent. And then your, your parents constantly tell you, no, don't do that. No, get out of there. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Then your teachers are no. And then you're, everybody's no, no, no. You can't do You have to do this. You do what I tell you, not what I, no. You, you get negativity your whole life. So you have to get that negativity out of your mind, out of your brain. Some people uh, ridicule themselves. Uh, for doing something. Oh, I'm stupid. That's why you guys, you have to become aware of that because that all is the conditioning that they have been, you know, you have to remember these people have been doing this for thousands of years. These people have been doing this there, there, and like he said earlier in the show, if you missed it, where, where these guys are working with uh, literally psychological warfare, military, military grade psychological war, warfare, putting it out on the internet on you and me and everybody else, on television, you, me, and everybody else. So we need to combat that. So the first thing you need to do is, is open that closet, open that locker, open your brain, and get all that negative junk that's in there out and put positive things in its place. And once you start doing that it's like a snowball now this is what i was saying like yesterday you start out and you got your snowball and you're making it and it's about this big you know <clears throat> and then you're making it bigger <clears throat> and then you're making it bigger pretty soon it's on the ground you start pushing it and as you're pushing it you're going uphill now uh oh and it's getting bigger but now it's getting heavier and it's harder and you're pushing oh no i'm going uphill and i don't know if i can make it this is why i was saying like daniel and i and guys like me we're here to help you push that we're here to help you push that up over the top once he gets to the top of the hill all of a sudden what happens? It just runs downhill all by itself, and you have to chase after it, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what's going to happen if you're if you're you have the negative influence. Commercials are negative. The news is negative. Television in, in general is negative. The internet's negative. Look at all the trolls and the keyboard warriors and the horrible things that happen. You turn on the news, and they have one good story, and the 60 minutes of death, gore, violence, killing, horrifying things. Right. Think about that. It's true. All the channels in America, I don't know how it is in the UK, all the channels in America talk about seven subjects and then one or two local things. Otherwise, you're going to hear all the same rhetoric on every channel about the same thing. They've all gotten together and made promises to do that. Sounds like a conspiracy theory, people. Change the channel while you're watching the news. Watch one channel, go to another, go to another, go to another. They're all going to talk about the same thing, except for the local stuff where they're going to talk about local sports, local weather. Otherwise, you're going to hear the same national news. Everything's going to be all the same. And that's what's going to happen. Regional, too. If you're in a certain area, like I'm in Sacramento, and we got different channels here, you're going to find out that they're all going to talk about the same regional stories that are here in this area within a 50-mile radius of me. So they're conditioning you at every turn with negativity. So you need to get your barriers up against that negativity and push it all out of you and keep it away from you and then put positive in there and then you you stay positive towards yourself you, like daniel said earlier you have to love yourself so you have the only way you can do that is you have to be present in the moment grounded in yourself and if you can do that and be in yourself in the present and grounded that's important grounded if you don't know what that is look that up okay look that up or find someone that you know that understands what that means because once you become grounded and you feel what it feels like to be grounded you'll never forget it you'll never forget it you'll want to be grounded with this earth and with this universe and it and it's and you feel so much better you're because you're there and it's positive and you're in the moment and you can actually feel this planet and feel you me and everybody else around us and you can feel the universe you may not be ready to get there yet but once you are you're going to look back at me and go wow daniel was right and leo was right so that you get the negative out this is what daniel's telling you get the negative out and get the positive in and then you'll be a more positive person towards yourself you'll start to love yourself you'll feel better in your skin you'll feel better in your soul and then you'll you'll be more positive and you'll realize that all of our energy that we project on ourselves and on everyone else around us affects everything and everyone am i right daniel yeah, I mean, uh, anybody can fall and be claimed by their ego consciousness, you know, no matter how powerful they are. So you've got to create powerful relationships to prevent this fall as well, you know, relationships inside yourself, you know, with your higher self, for example, you, you know, relationships with others, relationships to places and even, you know, things within the world itself and things, you know. So ultimately, we can't do anything alone. So you know, friends and allies are very important to have, you know, friends and allies, you know, they, they aid us, they guide us, they counsel us during our, you know, the journey, you know, to the singular truth inside ourselves, 
you know, and uh, they help keep us anchored on that, you know, the golden path. So any missteps that we actually do uh, create for ourselves, you know, unintentionally, you know, they're always lessened, you know, any mistakes that we make. So it's like you were saying as well, uh, you know, don't plant negative seeds that foment an environment of fear, chaos and confusion, you know. Right. But plant positive seeds of awakening that sprout forth, you know, sprout forth wisdom, peace and love. And, you know, the first rule of love is to love yourself, obviously. You know, the first rule of peace is to find it within yourself. The first rule of kindness is to find it within yourself as well. Just like the first rule of happiness is to find it in yourself. You know, it's not going to come from some outer source, you know, you've got to find it in yourself. So you have everything you need within already. So don't be a tyrant, you know, with yourself. Right. Right. Right, and Josie said uh, in the chat, she said, just think about the culture of gory and torture and violence, and the teens crave this in all the movies. They keep them, uh, they keep them there uh, into this to keep them uh, uh, disturbed and distracted, and it's true. The, the, the television does the same thing. Um, you know, the, the, the violence, my generation, I'm, I'm going to be 50 in September, and here in America we're called the X generation you know, Gen X or Generation X, because in my generation when I was a teenager, the television programs were the most violent television programs uh, in the history of the world on television. Um, we had crazy things. One of the things that sticks into my mind was was um, uh, Miami Vice and um, the Tubbs and Crockett, the two cops in, in the show uh, of Miami Vice, killed more people in one episode of Miami Vice than were killed in 10 years in the entire state of Miami by the police department. Yeah, you should. Uh, yeah, I was going to say you should watch John Wick Two as well. That movie John Wick Two, I haven't seen yet, and I'm going. I, I want to see that because yeah, I mean, no, right? No, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just, yeah, the entire movie is just one big uh, kill session. Basically, it's just non-stop killing. Like, uh, <laughs> right. hey, well, I mean, one was pretty bad, and I, but I guess two is even worse, right? Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> horrible. It's just the one was the same way that they had the the beginning of a few minutes that wasn't probably, um, but the, yeah, the second one is just uh, you know that's like the movie um, Shoot 'Em Up, wasn't it? Shoot 'Em Up uh, there in England with Clive Owen was that called Shoot 'Em Up? Um, that was the same way. It was a it was a shooter movie, and they just killed people from the beginning to the end. It was just insane. I mean, if you love that stuff, it was great, but it was just it was just killing, killing 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 um and you know and and josie's right and i want to refer to myself unfortunately back when i was a teenager <clears throat> the things that we did that you guys don't know about we grew up during the time of 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 halloween the movies and friday the 13th the movies and hellraiser the movies and this is a true story i was actually there we did this i worked at a movie theater shout out to everybody that worked at uh, the dome anybody who knows me uh from conquer pleasant hill uh, Shout-outs to the Dome. Shout-outs to Sayufi Enterprises. Don't know if they're still around, but uh, the Dome was there. The theater was there. We used to hang out there trying to get a, a bunch of those guys back together for a reunion. Anyway, I'm friends with most of them on Facebook, so if they're watching this, kudos to you guys. And you'll remember this because we did it. Um, we were we had, we had worked at the movie theater. We went to a drive-in theater, which was one of our sister theaters, and we were there to watch one of the um, – uh, it was one of the, the uh, Friday the 13th movies. And what we did was we went and got the billboard numbers that we put up on the big marquee. Uh, because they were all there and we would slide them in for the different movies that were playing and slide them out and, and uh, we took the numbers with us and we went to the drive-in theater and we all sat on the hoods of our cars and in the back of trucks and we all listened and watched the movie and we all had the fake knife that Jason had and we had the mask on and every time Jason killed somebody we held up the numbers and ran around cheering how many people he killed uh, two, two, yeah of ten, ten and we're running around cheering that he had killed ten people and and you see, that's that's the kind of craziness that us Generation X people were were, uh, were caught up in, and it didn't take. It took us until we were in our adult life, into our twenties, before we realized that they were programming that into our brains. You guys don't know this because people like Daniel and I, since then, have convinced most of these people to change the programming and downplay the violence. The cartoons that used to be on the air here in Cal in the United States was the Warner Brothers cartoons. I'm sure, Daniel, you got to see some of the Warner Brothers cartoons. They're the most violent cartoons ever made. Those are 
no longer aired in the United States because they were too violent. Then they started making other Warner cartoons that were less violent uh, than those. But um, that's what we went through. So you guys are still getting some of the residual in other ways where they're keeping that trained on you. But it's not as bad as my generation, uh, and, and, and it's getting less, luckily, because there's more of us, like Daniel said. There's more of us every day that are becoming enlightened, and we're waking up, and we're changing things for the better. You guys just don't know it because you don't know how bad it was. Am I right, Daniel? Yeah, that's true. And I mean, I always say, you know, uh, to live is to be present, you know, because stagnation is death. You know, so a person should always be pumping new energy and presence into life, you know, so it doesn't stagnate. You know, and so the fractal holograph, you know, reality doesn't, you know, constrict through time. Because eventually, you know, if you're not pouring new energy into something and presence, it will collapse and just get worse and worse. And, uh, you know, you can see that through the decades as well. Like, you can see, like, uh, after the war, everybody didn't want war anymore. You know, they were concentrating, obviously, on, uh, you know, like the baby boomers and stuff, concentrating on families. And, you know, they were so sick of war, they didn't want war anymore. Right. So it's all to do with human uh, perception and focus and where it goes to, you know, to how the world's actually going to reflect and to, you know, how it's actually going to be and stuff. And, you know, most people today, you know, they, they want to do anything to try to disengage and escape reality, you know, if you, because presence comes with responsibility. You know, that's why I'm always saying, you know, be present always and stuff, because the more present you are to yourself, the more present you are to your life, you know, everything's about presence. So if you're going to be present to yourself internally and present to your own life externally, you know, it opens up the keys to being able to create any reality, you know, you do so choose at any time as well, you know, and that's ultimately as well what the, uh, you know, the Matrix movie thing was about as well with uh, Keanu Reeves in, you know, about he was, be able, you know, because he was an ocean within the drop, the actual ocean itself could come to his aid at any time. Right. Because he was such a concentrated, powerful being inside himself, you know, because ultimately everybody is a fragment of the creator, so we can contain the whole information of the whole. And, you know, that's what a holograph is as well, you know, because this this universe now is a holographic projection of light, right. you know, within and, you know, it's moving. So, uh, you know, if you send it in yourself, there's no reason why you can't alter reality uh, to different things. Right. And emotion itself, you know, there's many different dimensions that are simultaneously, uh, you know, omnipresent alongside, you know, our existence here and stuff. And, uh, you know, emotion itself, you know, that's the, the actual uh, thing that collapses the wave function of reality itself, you know. So if you learn how to take control of your emotion, you know, not control it, you know, in a sense, but more direct it so it's not directing you, right. you know, then you'll have total control over, you know, where it's going and where you're putting it and where you're putting that focus, you know, so focus is very important alongside presence, you know, yes. that's two things. Of and intention, 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 your intent, yeah. right? That's all, in, well, intention and yeah. attention. Yeah, and you know, no attention, absolutely good one, and yeah. attention, yes. Exactly, and the intention goes into... Um, creating reality anyway because you know from from the onset of creating you know a seed you know see everything as a seed that spirals out frac you know fractally through time like a tree or whatever you know you want that primal seed you know of your intent you want it to be uh, good you want it to be uncorrupted you know so y you know your original intent is very very important in any creation that you're going to create for yourself as well right. and uh, one of the other things I wanted to uh, just talk about as well briefly cover is uh, you know the four foundational you know spheres of life you know which I talked about last time which was uh, you know the four foundational spheres which were you know your life you know um, your health you know and your work your relationships and your spirituality you know and you don't want to you know, stimulate or overindulge on any one of the cost of the others, you know, or you're going to become, uh, you know, weakened and blind, you know. The right. true power lies in your ability, basically, to, um, you know, to be able to balance all your four foundational spheres of life, because everything comes down to them four spheres, which is health, work, relationships, and spirituality. And if you have a handle on them, then you've already won half the journey, you know. And then right. there's also the, uh, you know, the, the four foundational domains of existence as well, which are the physical domain, 
the mental domain, the emotional domain, and the spiritual, uh, you know, domains as well, you know, and these domains, like I was saying a few minutes ago, they all represent parallel and omnipresent living dimensions and realities, you know, and they're just as real, you know, as the world in which we live today, but you right. need to be able to master those four domain, uh, sorry, those four domains of existence, you know, as well as the four spheres of life as well, you know. Right, right. Now, Josie, referring back to what we were talking about, said, uh, and most of the kids' shows nowadays you get, and I think this is important to bring up, that's why I'm, I'm going backwards here, you get alien and alien invasion. Do you, do you think it's a soft disclosure? Now, uh, let me answer, and then I'll let you answer. My, my opinion on that is uh, twofold, uh, yes and no. Yes, I think that, because I've thought that about a lot of things where they put aliens into the cartoons and the shows for the kids, because the people who are actually making the show are trying to integrate the idea of aliens to the children, so it makes it easier for them to accept. But I would say no if uh, it's an alien invasion. Because then that's the that's the that's the the behind the scenes controllers trying to make our children afraid of an alien invasion and program them that ba aliens are bad. So that's my opinion. So uh, 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 Daniel, how do you want to address that? The, what, what Josie has said. Yeah, it's all, it's all to do with the uh, the presence and the focus thing again. You know, it's all coming back to uh, you know they're trying to condition people you know, ahead of time right. on their agenda of where, where they want to swing things, you know, and, right. you know, if you're not building your own reality, if you're not building your own dreams, you know, then somebody else is doing it for you, and that's basically what they're doing, and they're right. called programs because, you know, they're called programs because, you know, it's a, it's a set reality, like, in a little box that they present to people, and they, they uh, you know, it's a program for them, it's a program, they're programming, mm -hmm. basically, to, uh, you know, for their own agenda, you know, to lead people that way. So ultimately, though, you know, that's just half the, uh, you know, thing that's going on. Now, ultimately, half the battle is, you know, you yourself, you need to make sure that, because there's so much movies and so much music and stuff coming out today, yeah. you know, you need to really uh, be conscious of what you're actually taking into your, your different, um, you know, your different domains of, you know, you, know, you know, your existence, you know, because, like I said, it's not just the physical domain where you're actually watching something, you've got to be aware of the mental environment, you've got to be aware of your emotional uh, environment. For example, I watched a film called Zodiac, which was about, um, like, a serial killer and stuff, and... Uh, yeah, then, that, the Zodiac like, killer happened, yeah. I just want to cut in real quick, the Zodiac killer happened uh, where I lived. Where I grew up, I grew up in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, and he was killing people around Concord, uh, Berkeley, uh, Antioch, and I grew up there, and all my friends grew up there, so I just wanted to, while that was happening, I was there, and we were terrified. Anyway, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, well, I was just going to say as well, you know, I, I mean, I can't believe that you was actually there. I was, yeah. We, were, they actually, we actually know of the different sites where people, I've actually been to the different sites where people kill. Mount Diablo was what the Zodiac Killer based his uh, zero point, and then he would go out uh, uh, in different mathematical equations to different points, and that's where he would go to kill. And Mount Diablo, I actually have a tattooed on my arm, Mount Diablo, I lived at the base of Mount Diablo, literally. Uh, Mount Diablo was uh, the, the foothills that you just started to drive up in the mountain was literally four and a half miles from my house and then we drove up to Mount Diablo so anyway go ahead well that's crazy well yeah. I was just saying that you know even me you know you know you've uh, you know you really got to be aware of what you're actually uh, putting into the different uh, dimensions of your being because like I said there's four diamond you know foundational domains of existence that you actually you know we're multi-dimensional beings you know there's many dimensions you know that are going on at the same time and you need to be aware of all of them you know I've put them all within the book you know I've called it the four domains of existence for example and then you know your actual life within the world you know I call it the uh, the four foundational spheres of life as well which is why I said earlier but um, you know the, like the Zodiac Killer, that movie, you know, it, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and obviously because my subconscious was disturbed by, you know, one or two of the images, you know, I was right. like, why did I just randomly wake up at this time of night for no reason? Right. And then I was, because I know that, you know, there's no such thing as a random thought, there's no such thing as right. just waking up for no reason or whatever, right. you know. Right, absolutely. But, <laughs> or whatever, but, uh, yeah. yeah, but. Yeah, I just woke up, and then I realized that um, it was because I watched that movie quite late at night, and my subconscious, you know, it couldn't deal with, it couldn't compute it or something, you know, it was just too much, so... We're still working of, on part of it, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 like a, a deeper level, so it kind of woke me up, but I was like, um, you know, it's the same with everything, it has like a, you know, cumulative, um, you know, eroding effect within pe on people's being, the more right. darkness 
because evil itself likes to be studied. Yep. So you need to make sure that you have an equal and opposite light that you actually, and positivity that you look into if you are to study such things, because, you know, like I says, it's, it's all to do with uh, willpower. It's all to do with um, how much focus you put on specific things. Yep. Like, you can't just study evil if you're not, if you're not study uh, in good, and you're not anchored firmly within good itself as well, and actually right. spend a lot of time and within that the most because you won't be able to handle it you will actually you know it will actually flip it over and invert yep. you and turn you into the very evil you're actually studying if you were to just look into the darkness if you know what I mean very so very good Jedi history. analogy there very good Jedi once you start down the dark path forever will it consume your uh, destiny very yeah good. only very good. Focus is upon it <laughs> yeah very good no he's, but he's right though people and that and because it's the truth when, when you start studying uh, uh darkness if you're trying to look into it and evil and and all that stuff he's right it, because all of that becomes around you and and they they see you and the evil energy finds you because you're looking at them and they they're gaining power from you and if you're afraid they even get more power from you so if you're scared while you're learning it well i don't know about this stuff they're going to jump on you the whole energy around you is going to change and it's and you'll be at a, pre, a precipice on, and, and you'll you'll go over the edge uh because your own fear drives you over the edge. Your own non-belief in, in yourself will drive you over the edge. So if you're going to, you have to balance that. There has to be a balance between both light and darkness in, in your life. And I, and I live my life that way. And I think that's the, really the, the, it's not really, it's not really the Jedi way, but I think it's becoming the Jedi way where you just trust in the Force. I just trust in the universe. So in a sense, I'm trusting in the Force. Because there really is a force in the universe that is just like the force in in uh, in that in that movie, and that's why there are people now who are striving to become Jedi because there is that force in the universe. And if you balance that and just allow yourself to be and allow yourself to be in the universe, because there are not evil trees, there are not evil dogs. There, nothing in the universe is evil, but man makes it so, but the human race makes it so. So that's that we have the ability. And to, to manifest that energy and other beings in the universe, but you have to be a sentient being to do that. Grass blades are not evil. You don't have an evil grass blade and a good grass blade. They're just grass blades. Do you see? So you and I and everyone else have that choice to manifest that. So the only way that you can uh, uh, learn about that is like Daniel said, you have to learn about the good as well and keep as enough good to balance out and to get that ickiness off of you that gets stuck to you when you read and learn and look at, and look at that evil. You have, to get it, you have to get that off of you because it stays on you. You have to cleanse yourself. So you have to go back to the light side and cleanse yourself of that yucky. You get it off. Get it away. And then you can go back with a fresh knowledge of what you've just learned but also more confidence because you would have gained. Am I right, Daniel, on that? You would have gained consciousness because now you're doing that. You're going and learning on both sides, right? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, uh, you know, not only is presence important and, uh, you know, and your focus and, you know, balance is very, very important as well, you know, like we were saying. But it's like, you know, never take actions within your life, you know, or do things in life that, you know, jeopardizes your whole internal, you know, and external stability or your security in life or that of others, you know. Right. So, you know, never just look into the darkness and think that you can deal with it because, you know, the most powerful beings, you know, anywhere, you know, after a while, if they're not within balance within themselves, they will start turning into that very darkness that they're doing, you know, and, you know, disunion within people, you know, is a grim companion, you know, and uh, a lot of people and beings within our world now carry that, you know, because of all the movies and all the things and basically, you know, the environment, you know, that's been fomented, you know, within movies and, you know, the social media even and, you know, other things, you know, but it's like, um, you know, disunion within people, you know, that's like the circle that binds, you know, humanity in circles and, you know, it's the epitome of strength to know how to help oneself in misfortune, you know, so to be able to, you know, to be present to yourself and unify your being, you know, is to alleviate this, you know, and if you have the power to alleviate your own suffering, you know, and you, you know, the unity of self that I'm always talking about, which is to be present to yourself fully and, you know, put in the time, you know, every single day, you know, even upon every single hour, check in with yourself. If you have that level of unity of being, because you actually, you know, it's not just like fairy tale fantasy, you know, BS. It's actually a practice, a spiritual practice that you can do every day to become very powerful, you know, and there's not going to be a being, you know, walking the earth 
who's as powerful or has as strong willpower as what you have, you know, right. or to be capable of what you can do because, you know, it's not you actually doing it, it's, you know, your higher self. You're just the vessel, basically, for your higher true power to flow through, you know, right. into the, you know, and if you have unity of self, you know, that's the resolution to all suffering anyway, not only within yourself, but you'll be able to create that within the world as well, you know, and for others. And, you know, that's one of the most important lessons, really, is to, you know, be a force for good within the world, and then when and where you can, try to alleviate the suffering for everybody else as well, Absolutely. you know. That's what yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And, you know, if you're, if you're a Christian, look at their, your New Testament. Jesus even said in there that, that uh, if you had enough faith, you could move mountains. And he didn't, he didn't mean that figuratively. He meant that literally, that, that, or and figuratively, really. But you could move mountains. You're, you're strong enough if you have enough faith. And, and all you have to do is believe in yourself and, and, and be present and in yourself and grounded with the universe and confident and knowing that you and everyone else around you for a positive gain have enough strength that we can do what we need to get done and we can get it done and you as a personal individual being will find that you have more uh more power more strength in your personal life and people who maybe before pushed you around you won't allow that to happen you'll go you know what stop that i don't agree with that i don't like it quit treating me like that and you, you'll find that you'll all of a sudden become uh, happier with yourself, and you'll and you'll uh, find other things that you like to do that you didn't realize that were positive things that you like to do. Uh, only because before you were bombarded with so much negativity that you're sitting there depressed, going, "My God, the world's coming to an end, and and I'm in it, and what what's going to happen?" And, and but it's not true. They just want you to believe that because none of it's true, none of it's real. Am I right, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, you know, with the power of love, you know, the force from above, or, you know, should we say the force birthing within the core of your true, pure being within, you know, you can always go longer than you think, you know, travel further than you've ever achieved, right. create anything you can imagine, and yet, you know, you can meet any challenge, you know, and with that love, you know, anything's attainable, any community, you know, is sustainable, you know, love conquers all and, you know, it brings clarity to all things, it makes everything clear, you know, it brings unity so it allows no blocks within your human form, you know, so that all that energy from your higher self and, you know, that central pure cure, you know, just, uh, you know, just flows and it's clear, cuts through everything like a blade, you know, nothing can withstand the ultimate power, you know, that is the vibrant living, present love is what I call it, you know, present love. And, uh, you know, like the sun shines on the righteous, you know, it's not just right. the external sun, but it's also the inner sun, you know, internally projecting its powerful sunbeams, you know, filling your life, you know, with uh, presence. And it just blesses all life and creatures and the creation alike, you know. So. Right, absolutely. All right, well, we're running on now, so we're, we're running over two hours. So I think we'll have to call it for, for today, and I'll have to have you back on again because um, there's, we, they, we just hardly ever touch on everything. We, you know, we skim the surface of the iceberg, and there's so much more below, below the waterline that we never get to. Um, I'll, yeah. have to, I'll, have to I'll have to schedule you. So, um, again, let, uh, do you have a website? If you do, let people know. Otherwise, tell them where we can find your book. Tell them uh, if you have Facebook pages, what they are, your YouTube page give them all that information okay yeah um, yeah it's just uh, well basically the best thing to do is just go to my YouTube channel which is uh, you know Daniel of Doria which is all one word and then two A's you know on Doria Daniel of Doria because you know they deleted my first one obviously so I had to start again <laughs> and, uh, and then my uh, my free books you know like I said the, f the third one uh, just only came out uh, the other day mm -hmm. you know like two weeks ago you know like uh like when we did the other radio show we right. you know i actually done it did i you know i said right. i was gonna have one coming out soon so but right. yeah i've actually to complete the trilogy you know it's called the raiding uh sorry the raising eden wisdom trilogy and uh the first one's called uh raising eden wisdom of the eternal the second one is called raising eden volume two wisdom of the singular truth and then the third one, it's just only come out, it's called Raising Eden, Volume 3, uh, Wisdom of the Ascendant. And all of them are available on Amazon in paperback. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. Can they get it on ebook yet or Kindle yet? 
No, because uh, all of my work always constantly got deleted uh, at the moment uh, in, in, in ebook form. Well, I wanted to uh, make sure that my book was out in you know paperback first. Before you messed with that, all right then. So we'll have to we'll have to uh, follow that. I'll keep an eye on you, and once you get that uh, uh, up there, we'll have to let people know. So, um, uh, Daniel, thank you again for for coming on. Uh, stand by, because what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna play the I'm gonna play the song out and run his photos again. It has a lot of his quotes uh, on there and his books and stuff like that. So you you guys can see those if you miss them in the beginning. And um, you guys uh, go to you know, my page, right? Orion Rising Worldwide, Ancient Aliens Worldwide groups on Facebook. I also have the pages for both of those, Orion Rising and uh, uh, Ancient Aliens Worldwide. The pages, go to those pages, follow those pages, like those pages. Also, uh, my uh, YouTube page, uh, I have uh, a couple of them. One is uh, that I'm using for the archive uh, right now is, uh, is is my name, Leonard O'Neill. Uh, there's two of them under that name. One only has like three videos. The other one has like uh, 25, 26, 27. That's growing. That's the one. Like that. Subscribe to it. Pass it on to your friends. I'm also going to start archiving on Orion Rising TV. That's uh, uh, if you go to YouTube and do a search for that. Um, right now there's no videos on there, but there will be because as I expand and I, and I uh, get more stuff going here, that's where we're going to archive. Right now, also on the pages, Orion Rising, uh, the page and uh, Ancient Aliens Worldwide, the page, not the groups, I archive the videos of the shows that I'm doing so you guys can watch them there as well. So go take a look at that stuff. Like I said, like those pages, subscribe to those pages, like Daniel's page, subscribe to it, like his YouTube uh, channel, subscribe to it, like my YouTube channel, subscribe to it, go and get my book, Orion Rising. That's the first book of a trilogy. It is the Orion Rising trilogy. The other books haven't come out yet. I'm going to have another book coming out probably in 2018 uh, because I had to get this show going in 2017. So so probably late, either late, probably about this time next year, I'll have uh, Orion Rising, the second book coming out, and the third will come out a year or two after that. So you can get my book online anywhere, uh, just about anywhere. You can get it on all of the e-books. You can get it on uh, even the G-book. You can get it on Kindle. Uh, it's sold uh, on eBay, uh, on Amazon, bookstores, not uh, BarnesandNoble.com, uh, the big bookstores here in America. Haven't picked it up yet, but uh, most of the bookstores over in the rest of the world have. Uh, they have them in, in smaller bookstores stores, not the big ones. The big boxes haven't picked me up yet, but uh, they will eventually. So um, take a look at that, guys. Tune in. Uh, take a look at my calendar. Um, I, I will be posting that. I put them on the events. So if you're in my groups or you're in my pages, you'll see them uh, there. I have uh, Bruce Cunningham going to be on here tomorrow. Uh, and then I have uh, Rachel going to be on uh, Monday. Uh, Rachel Gibson is another psychic. I'm going to have her on. And the only other person I have scheduled right this second, only because there's like six of you I haven't gotten back to yet. And I'll be getting back to you today. Uh, or actually eight. There's eight of you. Um, uh, I'll be getting you guys on the schedule. Otherwise, I have Julia coming up on Friday, the uh, 7th of July. Uh, and she is uh, paranormal, I believe. Um, and uh, but my calendar's filling up really quickly. Uh, I just haven't gotten back to some of you because I've been busy with the shows. Did two shows yesterday, one show today, and one show every day last week except for Thursday. So um, now that I'm running everything on my own, there's a lot of work. So uh, I am still trying to keep the shows going as many as I can. But I may back off a little bit just so that I can get a bunch of schedules uh, scheduled. So, uh, Daniel, again, thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, hang on. Don't, don't – uh, don't go away when uh, when we uh, do the thing. Uh, let me get off air, and then you and I can talk for a few minutes before uh, uh, before uh, before we get going here. So hang tight. Uh, let me uh, play this out, guys. Great show. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'm gonna um, switch over here to the uh, slideshow, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play the song that I had that goes along with the slideshow here. When the song is over, I'll then I'll end the uh, broadcast. All right. So thanks, guys. Great show, Daniel. Thank you again. Cheers.